the Moda Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill. Good evening and welcome back to the Moda Super Series. It's the second session of the day, which means we get Group B underway this evening. We apologise that we are getting underway slightly later than scheduled. We've had some technical issues. It's not because this man alongside me has had some irrational demands, we can assure you. Chris Murphy... We're going to look ahead to Group B, but first of all, we're going to reflect on what we've seen already this week because Mark Dudbridge is the first player through to finals night. He qualified through Group A. Tony O'Shea, Wes Newton drop into Group B. Of those two players, who do you think is going to be the most settled tonight? Tough question. Um, it's weird Chris Mason was probably the best player in that group, wasn't he, and isn't here, but I think uh, Tony O'Shea on performances at the Super Series is probably the most consistent player. He's actually won two-thirds of his matches without even playing his best. And you can see there he finished level on points with Mark W at the top of the table, which when you looked at the matches, you wouldn't think that would have been the case. Yeah, and it was certainly consistency that was a bit of an issue for Tony, wasn't it? We weren't really sure, especially in the finishing phase, what we were going to get from him in Group A. Yeah, again, he's that type of player, isn't he? We call them field players where... If it's right, it's very good, lovely to watch, um, but it's difficult for a player like him to, to make the adjustment when it's not going so well. Indeed. Right then, as we mentioned, this is the second session of today. We did get Group C underway earlier this morning, and it was Chris Mason who got himself into a good lead in the table, winning five of his five matches. Here are the highlights from this morning's session. It was a day of two halves for Gary Robson. Six points on the board for him. And this 76 was one of his highlights of the day as he got the better of John Boy Walton. Mark Clayton was on debut here at the Super Series and he had a three and two day himself. This 106 was a highlight against Chris Mason, although he would end up losing this particular match. John Boy Walton won his last game of the day to keep him in contention of qualifying through Group C. This 110 was his highest finish of the day against Barry Bates. As for Champagne Barry, it was darting 101 for him as he picked up two wins from his five matches, which sees him in fourth. Alan Norris will be a case of going again tomorrow. It was a case of losing four free battles, but this 130 was the highlight as he secured victory against the 2001 world champion. And Mace was the ace, and this 136 was his highlight as he completed a clean sweep of victories, 10 points from 10, and is the favourite to progress. Yeah, Chris Mason certainly leading the way in Group C there. Let's turn our attentions to Group B this evening. Another one of our own in Paul Nicholson getting his Super Series campaign underway, making his debut here. What are you expecting from him? Because we've not really seen him in action for a number of years. About three years, yeah, since he's really played competitive darts. I think the last time he played was a darts from home that we had uh, in the initial kind of concept of what's become the Moda Super Series. So, yeah, I'm not sure what to expect. I do think the performance of Chris Mason might, in a strange way, have put a little bit more pressure on Paul Nicholson. He's a man who takes the game of darts very, very seriously, a very different character when he's in that practice room or on that stage to the kind of light-hearted, jovial one that he is in the commentary box. And we've mentioned Tony O'Shea, Wes Newton. Do you think that their experience in the three days is going to play 
play a part in this group. We saw it earlier on, didn't we, with the players who'd already played. They made their mark in Group C. Do you think that'll be the case tonight? Maybe even more so because they've had a rest. We also heard from Mace stood here, didn't we, saying that he was running on fumes. Um, you know, I wish that I could have some of those fumes the way he played this afternoon. But yeah, yeah I think that they've had a bit of a rest. They're playing in the evening sessions. They'll feel even more comfortable and it's more what darts players are used to. Absolutely. First up, it is Tony O'Shea against Richie Housen. Richie Housen, who we did see in action the week before we moved to this new venue. It's his first time playing a week here. What are we expecting from him? He wasn't involved in any matches that finished 4-0, so I think he'll be competitive in every single match. I think we'll see his games go close. And I think, you know what, this group is really competitive. This morning, I mean, I was totally wrong. I made a prediction of all six positions and it won't come right, but I would not even dare to do that in this group. It's so close. Any three of the five could get through. Okay, that ruins my next question because I was going to ask for predictions, but we won't get any out of you, will we? No, I, I'll be completely honest and I'll be right this time because I've got absolutely no idea. Excellent. Right then, let's get this one underway. Henry, over to you. Thank you, Abby, and a very good evening, everyone. It's our second dosage of treats here on Tungsten Thursday at the Moda Super Series as we see Tony O'Shea, the silverback, the three-time former Lakeside finalist up against one of the stars of the World Seniors in 2022 in Richie the Owl Housen. Perhaps appropriately, Owl is in the evening session here. Of course, we have the long-awaited debut of the asset, Paul Nicholson. That's going to come in our next match. He takes on Andy Jenkins, the local favourite from these parts in Cosham. And then Wes Newton completes our Fab Five lineup for Group B here in week 12. A very good evening to everyone who is joining us. And if first you are joining us for the first time, very warm welcome to you. And may I advise you to give us a follow on our social channels at MSS Darts, as you can see on the bottom of your screen on Twitter. At Tony O'Shea Thank gets our evening you. session underway. Marco Meyer is your referee for all the action throughout the course of the week, up until Saturday night's finals here at the Live Lounge Forty in one. Portsmouth. I'm Henry Deacon, and alongside me, it's a very good evening to Chris Murphy. Yeah, good evening, Henry. Really looking forward to this group. As I was saying to Abby 16. at the top of the show, I think it's a, a really, really difficult to decipher group of players. And any three from this group could make it through. Abby was uh, 38. willing to put me on the spot, but I was not willing to play ball with you. What, what are your thoughts? So you're going to sit on the fence and make me make a prediction. OK, I, I see where we're going now. Well, someone should. But it won't be me tonight. Is it like that line from the Inbetweeners? You can if you like, but I won't be there. 100. Are you going to? Give me one name that you think I'll make it through. How about that? That's fair, isn't it? I'll give you one if you give me one. 16. Andy Jenkins. Okay. Andy Jenkins. 100. Tony O'Shea, actually. Tony I, I think Tony O'Shea's got a good chance as well. Gets results, does Tony, in the Super Series. Doesn't always have the best performances. Although, also, as I said to Abby, Richie Housen 40. was very competitive when he was here last. <laughs> All of his games were, were close encounters. And it's the story of Tony O'Shea's career, Tony isn't it? When you look at all of the big results he's got, they've always been in battles that have gone last sets, last legs, as he goes for double 16 to win this opening leg. Yeah, and he wins. People talk about those big finals he's been in and not won the tournament, but you don't get to the finals without winning an awful lot of matches to get there. He's down to double 16. 85. Tony, you require 32 to take the opening leg. Twenty-four. Richie you requires seventy-nine. Twenty and tops and the, the dart in the twenty won't really be in the way for Richie House and they fall pretty flat in the board. Thirty-nine. Tony you require eight. 
But irrespective of whether it fell flat or blocked the bed, it didn't go in. So double four for Tony O'Shea. And it was a comfortable leg in the scoring yeah, phase. Sure it became a little time. bit uncomfortable Tony on the O'Shea. doubles. But O'Shea lands the opening leg of the night in the end in 23 darts. Second lock is Richard to throw first. Game on. And interesting you talk about the way Housen's darts enter the board. We were speaking earlier about how a lot of the players 100. in the afternoon session, their darts stood up to attention. And that, even though we're talking about a veteran group, in the modern game, we don't see many stackers at the top of the game. But Richie Housen bucks 16. that trend in the fact that that first dart, if he can just pitch it just underneath that treble bed, it's a perfect lie for him. Yeah, maybe a little bit closer than that. But he has managed to use it almost through the V of the flight there, Richie Housen, who did play some very good stuff at the World Seniors Championship. I, I always kind of joke that Housen was hardly a, a household name in his own household 45. when he played on the professional tour. Rarely made an impact on that, but in all seriousness, everybody in Essex knew what he was capable of when he rocked up at the Circus Tavern. And he had some real memorable moments in his man who's 16. carving out a name for himself by virtue of the seniors tour, by virtue of the Super Series now. Exactly that. And to be honest, the only reason he got deposed at the Seniors Championship was because Martin Adams decided to turn back the clock and put in an imperious performance. Yeah, the night that the Howl beat the Owl, Henry. We've started. 100. Why does stars mean to go on? We're here for the next three hours on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel and on Sporty Stuff TV. And, of course, with the introduction of Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson this week, there's going to be one or two new viewers 16. to us here. So Richie don't forget Crowell, to give us a subscribe and get in contact with myself and Murph. We'll talk about how you can get in touch with us in the next leg because Halston here on one for one for a hold back. He's got six from this juncture. 55. Yeah, all that Tony O'Shea can do here is hit and hope. He's a stubborn old silverback. He'll stay there. Now he well, doesn't have to. 91. And he could do that more Would often. You require 86? I thought he was going to stay there, Murph. Well, he did with the second dart. You could see he was disappointed that he had to switch, really. He knew he had to switch. Might not matter a bit yeah, because Richie Housen has leg. cleaned up the Richie 86 Hudson. to take the second leg. And we're all square in this one. On a piece between Housen and oh, O'Shea. Right, and as we mentioned, you can first. get in contact with myself and Chris Murphy via Twitter this evening. You are? At Chris Murphy 180. At H underscore D comedian myself. Oh, and hopefully we'll be seeing plenty of darts just like that from Tony O'Shea. Our first maximum of the night here. And hopefully the first of many. Yeah, and don't forget to tag in at MSS Darts 60. too. Any of your tweets as well, that's our social media handle across Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Do check out 18. the highlights as well on our YouTube channel. Match of the day this afternoon, Chris Mason's excellent performance, one of many. Five wins for Mason. Do you think, Henry, we've got Paul Nicholson going up next? Do you think that puts pressure on Paul? Undoubtedly. I mean, the pressure was on the pair before the week began because in the capacity that we're in, in the in the commentary box, I, I mean, we've never played professionally and got no intention to, but I Forty can imagine five. that when you're sat in rooms like this and you're talking about people's throws, people's actions, sometimes you've got to be a bit critical in this job. You then got to back it up when you go onto the stage and I don't think that Nico's going to get any special treatment from us either. Well, those of you who have been watching Sporty Stuff TV all evening will have seen my preview chat with Daryl in the studio. Darren actually asked, because he's seen Chris Mason and 100. Paul Nicholson playing, when, when we'll be playing, Henry. I made the point that those two commentate because allegedly they can't play darts anymore. We commentate because we never could. 60. Tony, you require I use the 96. word allegedly, learnedly, after what we've seen from Mason over the last three days. Is now a bad time to tell you that we booked you in for week one of the next phase? 56. Well, to be honest, and what I saw in some of the games this afternoon, I'd fancy myself to get a leg. Never. Imagine that, that your ambition was to get a leg in the entire day. 
Maybe we'll, have a, we'll have a commentator's Tony playoff. Uniqua, yeah, we won't live stream it. We won't subject you to that. <laughs> Double top for Tonio. Yeah, that's game shot. And it goes 2-1. Tonio Shane. And what we said at the beginning of the match may be starting to play out here. Tonio Shane is a man first. who knows how to Game win on. battles, which is a strange outcome, really, for the type of player that he appears to be, because he's one of those Rolls-Royce darts players, isn't he, Tony O'Shea, that really 100. relaxed lob that he has that just looks so easy on the eye, but is conducive to inconsistencies. And it's his personality as well. We've both worked with Tony in the past, and he's one of the most relaxed people you'll 14. ever meet, but you get him on the stage in the heat of battle, and there is just this killer instinct about him. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see some chest thumping and bearing of the teeth from fine. the silver back. Should he make it to Saturday night here at the Super Series in front of our live audience, which you could be part of? Tickets available via dartshop.tv. Did you get an O'Shea bump earlier? Oh, always, yeah. Always get a, a warm embrace of Tony on arrival. Such an amiable chap. 100. Fifty-seven. Just get the sense that the last leg or so, Shay may have just upped it a tad here. It's moved. His average has moved up to around 79. Got the game solitary max. 204 points away from breaking house and opening up a 3-1 lead in our opener. 60. And though this is a group that has its advantages, Namely, three players going through from five, so more players going through than going out. It is Tony also the shortest race of the week, isn't it? Just eight matches each, the players. It makes that first game oh so crucial, which means you do not want to lose it, especially if 52. you're the first player Richie on. Well, Richie Housen will hope for that that's not the case for him. He's looking to bed tops for 2-2. Two, two. Good job that's over to the side, because that's awkward. And you see, by going the same side 20. of the double there he caught the fly the dart was probably destined for the double it took a nose dive and it's allowed o'shea back to the board may go bull oh he finds the ball and he's now going to get a dart at the outer ring double 16 is the choice 76. that would have been a super steal from silverback but instead housen can hold Yeah, and it's those doubles on the, on the side of the board Housen. that the stackers like Housen like so much because they've got an amiable guide there. Fifth flag, it's Tony to throw first. Game on. Yeah, you don't quite capture it from the, the standard camera angle on a darts broadcast because the camera is basically on the floor 100. of the stage pointing up. So where Rich Housen's darts seem to be... They'll say slightly pointing up. Actually, they're pretty much flat, if anything, perpendicular. 60. Lovely live with the first start. Should have got more on the tongue with that visit, I feel. Yeah, the dart was pretty low in the bed, but he could have moved across it and used it as a guide. And it is a feature of his game. The first dart merchant, Tony O'Shea. 100. Easy to follow than it is for him to adjust. Whereas House and maybe the opposite, as you were saying. He can build on the first dart. Now that's a delightful guide. And again, he fails to follow it. 81. A quick reminder of the fixtures for this evening. After this, Paul Nicholson 16. makes his Super Series bow. His first appearance in almost three years in a competitive darts match. He takes on Andy Jenkins, who will relish the task of being the first man to beat him on his comeback. Wes Newton then faces this man, 16. Tony O'Shea, before Housen returns to meet Nicholson. All the players playing each other once this evening. 
And once again tomorrow in reverse order, the last match of the night features Housen against Newton, who's got the longest evening of all of them, Richie Housen. 100. Tony, you require 160. Here's our bookender this evening. Number one of them. Tops. 120. Now, would have levelled our best finish of the week so far. It looks like it's going to help O'Shea get ahead in the match. Housen. Still really needs 16. a treble just to put pressure Tony on. Hasn't managed to do 14. that. But Tony knows that he may have more than three darts here. He probably only needs two because that's a gorgeous guide. No Not score. making use of those markers, is he? Richie on the trebles or the doubles. Two from 12 on the doubles for the silverback. And Housen can punish, and severely so. The bullseye for a break of throw. And yeah, a free two lead. And, fifth and that Richie could be Hudson. a crucial moment in this match and in this short course Group B. These Six moments at the Richie start of the group first. could be pivotal. I'm not sure if Tony O'Shea is trying to contain the laughter or he's about to burst out crying. His reaction there was a picture. As House and Pinder, a picture-perfect bull. But if any picture tells a story... It's the checkouts. Ten darts missed One by Tony O'Shea. The doubles is scoring. Has probably been better for the most part than Housen, who hasn't hit a two treble visit in the match. 100. 12 ton plus throws so far, which is absolutely staggering. Tony, as you can see on your screen, two maximums to his name. Yeah. And one of those tumblers throws, the checkout that we've just seen. Ended on the bolt. It's a good response, though, isn't it, from O'Shea? He had to wait a couple of visits there. The 1-2-1 one, one out, and then Housen's first 45. visit of this leg, and then walked up in a, and hit a 180. Credit to him, and that's why he wins battles, isn't it? Exactly. One of them, this could be a battle we may potentially... See on the Seniors Tour next year, both these players played in the inaugural World Seniors Championship at the Circus Tavern back in February 2022. We're heading back there February this year. Go to dartshop.tv for tickets for that one. Tony O'Shea is looking to create a bit of dart deja vu. Didn't have 89. to go for the bullseye like Housen with the arrow back on 159, but leaves himself on double 16 after 12 to get the break back and to send us all the way. 43. Housen had done the hard Tony work with that 32. brilliant bullseye bedding for the 1-2-1. One, one. Yeah, but O'Shea beds the, six the double line. 16, squares it up and has the darts in the decider. 7 and final arc, it's Tony to throw first. I just Game get on. the sense, Smurf, that this is going to be one of those groups where we're going to see a lot of seven legs. 121. Yeah, quite possibly. It's the first meeting between this pair. I think, just quickly glancing at the head -to heads, that every other combination, there has been at least 100. one match in some kind of system. Of course, both these players have played in the World Senior System, but O'Shea has usually been a wild card for the televised events, and Housen has had to win his way through. 59. If you're finishing top of that, Order of Merit, though, which he has on a few occasions. Richie Housen, it's, it's a decent standard to get there, isn't it? Don't discount him. And you look at some of the players who've been playing the Open Series events. We're going to see one in Andy Jenkins after this short break following this leg. Alan Norris we saw earlier on. Jim McEwen, who won the Champion of Champions special we did earlier on this year. Got to play some good stuff to be top of that particular Order of Merit. And... If you do get to the top ends of that order, more opportunities to play in the televised majors. One on an M14. This one's well balanced. Perfectly poised. 161 for Housen, who's already broken. 100. With a brilliant bullseye finish. The 121 that O'Shea has left himself. The 161 would supersede it. And Housen, the owl, may just land it. The bullseye. Once again, incredible shot. 
and absolutely Richie sensational Houston. stuff from Richie Housen, who takes out a 1 2 1 checkout earlier in the match and then beds the ball again to win it with a 1 6 1. Wow, wow, wow. What a start for the Owl. A 4 3 success over Tony O'Shea, averaging just shy of 80. But all the stats don't really tell you anything apart from that one at the bottom there. Two timely ton topping checkouts the 1 2 1 and that high 1 6 1. Top bull hitting from Housen, who takes the points in the opener. Next it is Andy Jenkins, the return of Rocky, taking on the long awaited debut at the Super Series of our very own Paul Nicholson. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where we've just seen Richie Housen come through in a last leg decider to get the better of Tony O'Shea in that one. The game went with throw in the first four legs before it was Tony O who missed darts at double in the fifth. We've said that phase of the game really cost him at times in Group A. It did again there with the Al capitalising to break O'Shea, recomposed to force a decider, but Richie Housen, who'd already taken out a 1-2-1 one, one on the ball earlier in the game, then closed out the match with a 12-dart leg and a 1-6-1, one, one, really timing those ton-plus outs to perfection in that match. Four out of nine for him on the outer ring in that one. So then next up, we 
we've got Andy Jenkins against our very own Paul Nicholson and Phil Bars caught up with the two of them prior to this one. Paul Nicholson, the player, is here this evening. Paul, is there some nerves? Unquestionably. There's always going to be nerves when you haven't done something in a while, if ever. But I suppose the thing that I have in my locker is that I've been here before and spent a bit of time on the stage. Maybe not in a playing capacity, but yeah, looking forward to the challenge. You did that practice day back before we officially moved here. Mm. Will that help you? Absolutely. I got to play Mark Webster. I got to play against Martin Adams. Uh, a couple of games, and I don't mind saying that I lost both games, but they were a bit nervy, uh, but I know the second game was better than the first, so I'm hoping to continue that trend. Andy, extra pressure on you this week? Well, yeah, obviously being the um, local boy, yeah, it's a bit of pressure. You know what I mean? Um, I've got to get through to Saturday night. I've got a few people coming, booked hotels, so, yeah, a bit of pressure. Obviously, you played in Southampton, but moving here, this is a different level, isn't it? Well, yeah, I used to come in this place and um, have a drink with my mates, and um, now it's a dark venue, it's a lot of pressure, and um, obviously it goes well. Playing for a lot of money now as well. Did you ever think this kind of money would be around the amateur game and, and things like this? I didn't think I'd still be playing at this time, but um, yeah, no, nah, I never thought that um, obviously Modus, where we started, me and Jason all them years ago, would be like this and this money that players want to play for every week. It's fantastic for the young players. Your second chance in this stage as well. Is there extra pressure because you've got another go at it? No, I don't think so, you know what I mean? Um, the last one I threw it away and, um, you know, I'm just glad I've got another crack at it. Well, interesting to hear from the pair of them before this one. Both players saying they're feeling a little bit under pressure for different reasons. Myself, Chris Murphy and Henry Deacon alongside me are ready to talk you through this. And I think that we've been looking forward to it. I think Paul Nichols in his own quiet way has been looking forward to it. But, but by the little spring in the step and the menacing look on the face of Andy Jenkins, both during that interview and behind Paul Nicholson when he was practicing then, I think he's been looking forward to this match a little bit more than anybody. It is the long-awaited return of the asset on a TV stage. Paul Nicholson, the former players' champion, returns to competitive darts. And he couldn't have picked a much tougher test to start than Rocky Andy Jenkins. First leg, it's pulled it through first. The favourite in many on. eyes to get through this Group B. And so the asset returns to the big stage. And it's as if he's never been away. One on the round, 23. Oh, he would have wanted that maximum. No doubt about it. But that might just be a little bit of a settler for Paul Nicholson, who hasn't 55. played competitive darts for 838 days. His last competitive match was at the, the Live League at home. The very inception of the Super Series when he 85. played against Stephen Burton in June 2020. In terms of standing next to his opponent on the hockey, it's almost a thousand days, 998 to be exact, since his bid at Q School in 2020. And his last televised match was the day he lost his tour card against Kevin Burness at the 2020 World Championship. Alexandra Palace. 100. Now, what would you think of your Andy Jenkins? Because we know what Paul has done in the past, but 16. a bit like Chris Mason on Monday, he is an unknown quantity. Yeah, it's in, I mean, Chris Mason hadn't played properly for 12 years, but we had got something to go on in more recent times because of the stuff he'd done in the seniors. Now, Paul Nicholson isn't of that age. One on the name so hasn't 40. played on the Challenge Tour, hasn't played in anything else, really. So we have absolutely nothing to go on other than how good he used to 29. be. For you require 53. Well, it's a good start for the asset, leaving 53 after 12 with the darts in the opening leg. Tops. Yeah, and Paul Nicholson kick-starts his Super Paul Series Nicholson. campaign with a 15-dart holder throw. We asked the question, how will the asset limber up? Well, so the early like questions and the early first. signs are quite Game promising. One. one thing as well that is quite interesting one on the end, is that eight of Paul Nicholson's highest 10 averages 
came at a tournament you may remember called the Championship League of Darts, played at Quandam Park for the PDC. Back in 2012, 2013, he had all those averages. That's not dissimilar to the kind of format and the kind of setting that the players are playing in now. 96. Remember coming home from school to watch that tournament on the internet at home. Fifty-seven. Yeah, not quite the days of dial-up, but not long after. This is a, a promising start for Nicholson. One on the And we saw it in Group A, didn't we? And we've seen it over the course of the week with Chris Mason. He didn't start a favourite for that group. He started an outsider. And suddenly he's favourite One to go deep on finals night. Andy Jenkins 14. was favourite for this group. That might change after this match because look at what Nicholson's doing. Jenkins still favourite to win this leg, but that 171 has put Paul back 16. in the picture. Not to be the scaremonger of doom here. But of course, this is only a guide after one game. The, the interesting battles will be as the evening goes on, as he plays on a more consistent basis, as you and Matt Edgar rightly regarded to in terms of Chris Mason in on Monday. But this is only the second leg of the game. And for all of Nicholson's brilliance that we've spoken highly 17. about, Jenkins had two darts there to level up at 17. one apiece. He couldn't net the fish, could he? Well, we've seen him do it on bigger stages than this before. We've seen him do it on the biggest stage before. That one goes wayward. 54. So Andy Jenkins hasn't and settled. And his interview 10. with Phil Bars before was quite interesting. Yeah, Maybe even more interesting than Paul's as he does Andy level Jenkins. up because he's put pressure on himself by virtue of already informing Third his mates to... Keep Game. Saturday night clear because they're off to watch Andy Jenkins play darts here in Portsmouth. The King of Cosham. I will tell you now, it will not be a quiet night here at the Live Lounge. And if Jenks is bringing his what army number? down, then get your tickets quick via dartshop.tv because it could be a sellout. He might be amongst them if he doesn't make it through. But every chance he will, will, remember three from five go through in this group. Although already... Having seen the first match go the distance, you don't want to be losing heavily because leg difference can quite often come into play here at the Super Series. 68. Forty-one. Both players that maybe have been forgotten about a little bit in terms of what they did achieve in a professional game. Paul Nicholson, of course, able to call himself a PDC TV title winner. Winning the Players' Championship, that famous 81. victory in the final against Mervyn King. He's had big wins against Phil Taylor, including in that tournament. He knocked out Taylor and Gary 100. Anderson of the UK Open on the same day once. Easy to dismiss the darting honours that he's had. Jenkins himself has won titles in the PDC and, of course, made the semi-finals at the World Championship. 100. A stage further than Nicholson ever managed. And, of course, as well, in 2022, Jenkins has had... Well, Rocky's had of an ace on in 2022. He hasn't quite come Four back off the canvas, but 52. he's won himself a challenge tour this year. Flirting around the top 10 in those rankings. And so on that basis, when you look at the opposition in this group, that is why the odds compilers would make him favourite to get or through to, to Saturday him. night's final. Yeah, and you may have heard him refer to, you know, when it all started with me and Jason, he said in that interview. Because Moda started off as a management one and events company. It's grown to be the biggest management and events company in darts. And Andy Jenkins was the first player on the books. And he's watched it all grow. I exaggerate his influence on it from time to time, but, you know, 83. only one can be the first, can't and they? And a 80. Jenks will never downplay anything. 20 for tops, for a break of throw and for 2-1, but he will not like that lie. There's not much of the bed to aim at. 14. 
And that is why Four the third five, dart flew. And so Nicholson returns for double 12 for 2 1. Yeah, good max in the leg from Andy Jenkins, but it might not avail him anything. Double six. You just see Paul Nicholson stepping across there. That's interesting. Double three. 21. And now and a chance for Jenks 40. to break. Yeah, that's he does been break. Than a third leg. Andy Jenkins. And Nicholson is playing at a, a slightly brisker pace than I expected. He's Ford by no means a, throw first. a fast thrower, never has been Paul Nicholson. But I did watch him closely. It was alluded to in that interview about a practice day they had here. And he did play in that. It was a bit of a, a rehearsal day and a few players came along to get involved. Obviously, Nicholson, as a, a commentator, was an obvious choice to be here and get used to the place. And I did notice 58. he was throwing, I thought, slower than ever on that day. This is more like what I remember seeing Paul Nicholson play like five or six years ago. 58. And interestingly, standing right to the very back of the stage is the back of his feet are not actually on the stage. They're floating over the top of it. And we saw it a lot during 58. his career in the PDC. He would stand as far back from the hockey as possible, stand as far back from the opponent as possible, one on the forty. He may find his way far back in this leg as Jenkins looks to open up a two-leg buffer in this particular battle. An interesting tweet that I've just retweeted, and I hope that the Super Series social admin will as well. Someone's got in touch to say that Paul Nicholson was practising in their club this afternoon, and he's actually left on the, the board, the chalkboard, 55. The, the practice game that he was playing. It'll take uh, too long for me to decipher and work out exactly what he was doing. Includes the words invisible opponent on that board as well. So Paul Nicholson was certainly taking it very seriously and didn't start his preparations when he got to the venue at around 8 o'clock. They've been going on all day by the sounds of it. When you say that you couldn't read it, is it because one of the intricacies of the practice room or the handwriting? Oh, definitely the intricacies. I'll let you have a look as Paul Nicholson has a look at this 170. Another. Oh, boy. Oh, bull. 136. And the unit drive 32. And that may have had to have gone. Double 16 for free one for Jenkins. No score. Four unit drive. And so Paul Nicholson returns for 34. But what will be the MO? Will he go straight for the double 17? Or will he split? We're going to find out a lot about how Nico's going to play this evening based on yeah, these next couple of darts. And he Paul gets Nicholson. the break back. And we are at two apiece. And it's a best of three to decide our second game of the evening. I said in game Big one that this Pope could first. be a night that will see a Big lot of four free matches. It could well end up being the case. Now, this pair did play. It mentioned that Paul Nicholson hasn't played for almost three years. 43. And his last outings were in that initial setup of the Super Series when it was the the darts at home situation and this pair played on 15 14. times in that so he does despite not playing for a long time have some of his most recent history against Andy Jenkins who actually got the better of him nine out of those 15 occasions 16. One hundred. And Jenks is relatively small sample, but his head to head in the PDC as well is in his favour two one. Nicholson knows him well, and he knows it's a he's the type of player who will remind him of 82. that. Eighty two. Not shy of the mind games, and Paul Nicholson is not shy of looking 45. after the mind either. It's a very interesting kind of difference between the, the players' approaches. Andy Jenkins is very much of the old school. Paul Nicholson very much of the the new school. Maybe a pioneer of it. 60. Keeping healthy body and healthy mind and meditation, yoga, all these things part of his approach. 
for playing this game. 34. Can't really imagine Andy Jenkins doing the downward facing dog. Forty-one. I'd imagine that when someone would probably say the word calm, we think that they're having a very weak curry. Sixty. Well, it might be a nice spicy finish to this one. Just as we got in the previous match, and what a couple of finishes we got from Richie House and there. Nicholson disgusted with himself with that dart, but two straight ones leave the 170 again. He's already threatened that. Forty-five. That's where he is. And you require 122. Will he get a go at it? Oh, oh, Andy Jenkins. Interesting stuff, 19. this. Mind games, Will I said. He's not shy of them. He's played some there. He has said this isn't going to go. And he was correct to say so. I say mind games. It might be that Andy Jenkins is the ultimate mathematician 96. and just purely played the percentages 32. there. Yeah, that's game shot. Whichever it was, it and worked out in his favour. He hits the front and has the darts to win the match. 3 2 to Rocky. Six and lines. so the and man from Portsdown Hill mm. is on the hill against Paul Nicholson. And interesting as well, I was having a chat with Andy this evening before play got underway. 55. And he's changed his flights, which is. Now, we're so accustomed to seeing Rocky with the Union Jack flights over the years, and he basically said he's had the kind of same setup in terms of flights for the best part of 20 years, if not more. But he's what changed to these you? new flights. I mean, a bit more aerodynamic and, and, and things like that. And he said that the scoring what power he he's got from those flights, just by changing a small intricacy of his equipment, has made a huge difference. The first time we've seen him here at the Super Series with this new setup. But he says that in practice and in local competitions, which he goes to quite a lot, he is getting his scoring game is getting much better. Forty-five. And it's the third time we've seen his darts used at the Super Series in this stage because he used them on his first attempt. Then Nathan Gervin used them when he lost his set. Andy Jenkins lent them him because he was living up in the Costa del Sol at the time. Lucky for some. Might be able to book another holiday One if he takes 14. a top prize on Saturday night. Remember, £5,000. Now, it's possible that we might see a second successive game, one with a 161 checkout here. The 161 checkout may have to go. One on the own, 40. Because Nicholson's left on 68 to take 61. us the distance. Can Jenkins win it in style? No, he can't. So Nicholson will return for the 68. One on two. Four, you require 68. May think about treble 12 here. Yeah, that was the de decision for Paul Nicholson. Double 18 in the end. Yeah, that's game short in the sixth leg. Paul Nicholson. All square. Seven ten final leg. It's ball to throw first. Game on. Well, last leg decider again, Henry. It is leg seven. 16. Once again, we saw a few of these this afternoon as well, particularly involving games with Alan Norris. All I would say is, if you're watching at home, make yourself a nice cup of Horlicks. Get yourself ready, get yourself settled. and because I think send you to sleep. I don't know I'm what, just saying, you know, what get kind second. of advice you're giving to our viewers 16. here, Henry. To be fair, me and you are part of our new gang, our new club, the coffee club here at the Super Series. One yeah, different effect. <laughs> and maybe a bit more will be needed if all the games go 4-3. In fact, it might become one long session. Group B straight into Group C, 9.30 a.m. Make sure you do catch 40 winks in between. I think we need something stronger than coffee 16. if we're going all the way through there. Steady on. 
Who's taking this one? Jenkins, the aggressor. 99. Same amount of darts thrown, and he's got himself below 200 after nine. Nicholson really needs to fill this up, and he ain't going to. 16. And so it looks as if the asset valiant attempt in the opening game is going to be in vain as Jenkins heads towards the 59. finishing line. One, two, eight left after 12. So if Nicholson perhaps could fill it up or get a 140, it'll keep him an interested party, but that's as bad a first start. Well, it is as bad a first start as it could get. Yeah, because now he's not leaving a finish and Andy Jenkins will have the luxury of not having to employ the 18 route on the 128. May just stay there for double four. 120. Well, it's a miss for the match for Andy Jenkins, but he's getting at least three more. All Nicholson can do is apply pressure and hope. Hope that there 16. is a miss from Jenkins, but he only needs 160, eight. and so... Jenkins returns for double four Game. to land Shots. a knockout Animals. blow Andy on Paul Jenkins. Nicholson's return. Two competitive darts. Andy Jenkins seals a 4-3 victory against the former players' champion. He is on to two points following his first game. He did it with an 81 average. The game's solitary maximum, four from 13 on the doubles. But there are promising signs for Paul Nicholson as he returns to darts competitively in front of the cameras for the first time in three years. Well, after the break, we are going to see Wes Newton, the only player we haven't seen so far in Group B in action. He takes on Tony O'Shea, who was aged out in our opening rubber against Richie Housen.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Two games in and we've been treated to two last leg deciders. Andy Jenkins coming through that last one, 4-3 to get the better of Paul Nicholson. A really good tungsten battle between the two. Oh, it was on a knife edge, but after forcing a last leg decider, Nico couldn't find a treble in his six visits to the board and Jenks motored towards the finish line. As you can see, four out of 13 on the the outer ring for Jenks in that one, an average of 81, and he was the player to hit the only 180 in that match. Much like Chris Mason, Paul Nicholson really played down his chances of doing anything in the Super Series this week, but also like Chris Mason, Paul Nicholson settling very well indeed. A 15 dart leg to open proceedings in that match and get his campaign underway, and despite that narrow defeat, plenty of positives for Paul Paul Nicholson to take from that match. I did actually speak to him before play got underway this evening. He said he's not entirely happy with his equipment. He did try to change it before coming here, but it just wasn't ready in time. So I wonder how much that's playing on his mind at the moment. Next up then, we've got Wes Newton against Tony O'Shea. They've of course played three times already this week. Wes winning the first encounter before Tony took the next two. In his first match of the evening, Tony Tony O'Shea missing 10 darts at double. That really costing him in that narrow defeat. Let's get into this one then and hand back over to our commentary team. Thank you very much, Abby. And by the conclusion of this game, we would have seen all five players in Group B in action as Wes Newton returns to the Super Series stage. We saw him on the Group A, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday action. 45-year-old from Fleetwood. Snapping at the heels of his opponents, wasn't he, over the first three days' worth of action. Got himself into Group B as a consequence alongside Tony O'Shea. Now a 61 from Stockport, three-time World Championship runner-up. Now, these two may have played in different codes over the years, but both being local enough, surely would have played each other a number of times in local opens. Yeah, I'm sure they will, and they have got some history outside of the Super Series on record as well. One win apiece and one win for Wes. Two for Tony this week. First lag is Wes's Big throw reason first. why he finished second and Wes finished third in the end in Group A. None of them 4-3 though, which is what both of our results have been so far this evening. Housen and Jenkins getting the 45. better of O'Shea and Nicholson. who remains amongst the club that we're part of, Henry, of commentators never to win a match at the Super Series. 100. I've got a distinct feeling that Nicker might change that and we won't. Well, he's in a club that we're not in at the moment, Henry. Commentators to have lost all his matches at the five. Super Series. I prefer that club. I don't but get to be a part of many clubs, so I'll take it. But yeah, Tony O'Shea here. One hundred and thirty-four. Looking to to get a third straight win against Wes Newton. Four nil on Tuesday. Four two yesterday. One hundred. And he was a man who stormed back, didn't he, up the table in Group A? But he doesn't have that luxury of an extra day. He can't afford two or 100. three defeats tonight, and to be playing catch up tomorrow unless somebody really dominates a group, which the first two games suggest won't happen. Well, I wonder whether Wes Newton should have gone downstairs there at the start of the 59. visit. Tony, he has done in the end, but doesn't even finish. O'Shea has got six from 167. Now, we know what Tony's like. He will stay upstairs. 91. I was going to say he'll stay upstairs, but he won't. He'll go down. Because he's a fellow commentator, he will stitch us up. <laughs> One hundred. Yeah, the thing Tony that frustrates me the most about the likes of Tony O'Shea, Martin Adams, etc., they're so stubborn at sending the treble 20. Most of the time when they switch, you actually hit the treble they're going for. Double eight is the double he's going for, but he's not Rest getting it. Where's Newton for a hold that might feel like a break here? Still possible if he finds a 57. Can he locate the red bit in the middle of the board? 73. Needs Tony to ask Richie Housen for a few tips, doesn't he? 
Tony would not like to be reminded of that. You hope that he won't yeah, need reminding of this leg time. because it's Two in his time. leisure. He breaks with Newton right from the get-go. He's in a 1-0 lead here Second against the Warrior. Game on. Now that we had uh, significantly big numbers watching the Paul Nicholson return. 55. Viewing figures on Sporty Stuff TV and the Motor Super Series and Online Darts YouTube channels all spiked One on during end, that moment. It does really garner interest, doesn't it? The the presence of Paul Mason and Paul Mason, Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson, perhaps more so than when they're in the commentary box. One Henry. On and I, I I do think that we're on to something here. I mean, the interests of this week with all the 43. veterans here and things like that is harbored a a real interest amongst the the darting fraternity. And I just wonder. You know, whether this is kind of the start of brand new theme weeks, you know, I know Chris Mason's been a big advocate for Women's Week. We could have a dev tour week of top players eligible, things I, like that. I also just wonder, particularly having seen Chris Mason, how many players are thinking about just dusting the darts down to give it a go for 26. one week? Players that we haven't seen for a while. Because you might not be good as often as you used to be, but if you can put it together for a day or two, you never know where it could lead. One on the end, 37. And this is the ultimate vehicle. If you want to, you know, whatever stage of your career you're at, and you're outside the PDC, whether you're at the start of your career, like a Jared Cole or an Ethan Gervin, 30. trying to win your tour card, it's vital match Journey practice. For players like O'Shea, where the seniors tour is where they want to be, or just want to enjoy darts again, you can come here, enjoy yourself, play darts in a competitive environment. 62. I'll ask you for a few more themes in the next leg or so because O'Shea is back for 64 to consolidate the opening 81. leg break Tony with a hold. 64. Another in there. Kind of went in between the 16 and the 8. 48. And then ended up in the 8 rather than the 16 in terms of the double. So we'll come back to try and hit what, it, what he's just hit. Okay, so hitting a double Tony, you require that goes down in the stats as a missed double because it wasn't the one he wanted. Yeah, that's game shot. Well, it's two Tony check O'Shea. outs of 16 to take the first two legs in this match for Tony O'Shea, who's looking to put things Third right after is, losing out to Richie House in game, game one. Let's go back to the question. I mean, we could, I mean, the, the options are endless of things that you could possibly do. As I say, this is, I think, maybe lit up a bit of a spark. Lit uh, up a lot of interest. Should just point out, this is not an official themed week. One on the just so happens 40. that on the same week, we've got quite a few players that are of senior qualification age. Wes Newton and Paul Nicholson. Certainly not in that category. One on the end, 25. You might not thank us for lumping them in with some kind of uh, OAP week, Henry. One on the end, 40. Well, who will be the MVP come the end of the week? 40. Chris Mason has certainly staked a claim and looks set to qualify. Four finals night alongside Mark Dudbridge, who made it through Group A. Mason winning all five matches One this afternoon. Eight, 40. West in Group 141. C and probably is a win or two away from securing his spot. And then three from this group. One more from Group C, which gets back underway at 9.30 a.m. Well, this 81. is for the double break and a 3-1 lead. Double 12. Yeah, well, you may have heard of the line. elf Tony on the O'Shea. shelf, but at the minute, O'Shea is making hay, and he leads by three legs to nil. I thought you were going to come out with some brilliant rhyme Four to go with Silver back there, Henry. You let me down. Game on. Silver back on the attack. One 
100. And again, we mentioned that the wins for either player this week against each other have been rather emphatic. We haven't really seen a match where they've gone toe to toe. 97. Newton not going toe to toe at the moment. It is a really convincing display from O'Shea. He's only allowed Wes Newton 16. one dart at double in the entire match and he's averaging more than 90. Just wonder if the evening sessions might see the best brought out in Silverback. 57. Incidentally, his best average this week is 97.31. So he has produced these levels this week, just not on the consistent 96. basis that we've seen in the past. Average in group A of 80.44. Yeah, and it's the B game, isn't it, that's mm. not been there. 85. It's been A game amazing and C game, well, you think of a, a disparaging word thing beginning with C. 100. Catastrophic. It's not that bad. But this could be for Wes Newton losing 4 0 in the opening match. 80. When the Turning other players to be defeated have lost by one leg. Leaves him with a bit of a, a hill to climb. What a way to win it this would be. Well, that's a wide and a high. But every chance he'll come back 21. and finish the job. One hundred. And so, Tony double 12 for O'Shea. That's unlucky. We'll Wesley never quite know if that went in or out the bed or not, but that is mightily unlucky. And so Wes Newton now could have a route back into the match. Going to get one dart at tops, 42. which goes above the wire. Only his second of the match. 12. Well, double six. Tony O'Shea could not have been much closer with the previous darts. He's having to step across once again. Six. West Newton will be 14. back. Four match darts at double six. Six in total. Sorry, five at double six. Six in Eight. total for Tony O'Shea. Tony now he wants six, six in total to win the total tally of legs in this match. Splits for double two. Game. Gets double Shot. two. Animates. Antonio Shea claims a 4 0 win over Wes Newton. And that was a mightily impressive performance up until the end of the match on the doubles. An 84.68 average in the end for O'Shea, but it was in and around the low to mid 90s for most of it. Four from 15 on the doubles, most of them coming to win the match. Wes Newton had. Four darts at double. Three of them coming in the last leg. Couldn't convert any of them. And so Tony O'Shea, 4-0 victor against Wes Newton. We're going to take a short break. When we return, it's going to be the Owl, Richie Housen, in action as he takes on the asset, Paul Nicholson.
Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where Tony O'Shea has just completed a whitewash win over Wes Newton to get his third victory in succession over Newton in that one. We've said at times, haven't we, that we don't know what to expect from Tony O'Shea given his up and down performances this week. At times, I don't think he's known, but one thing is for certain and that's his superb ability to respond to setbacks. It was a completely different display on the outer ring from Silverback in that one to accompany his consistent scoring until he was presented with match darts six missed but pinned double two to get over the line in that one as you can see four out of 15 for him on the outer ring in that one up next then we've got Richie Housen against Paul Nicholson two big finishes two ton plus finishes from Richie Housen in his opening victory here we can see the one six one a superb checkout to get over the line in a deciding leg in his opening match of the day. That, of course, his second bull out shot of the match. He also pinned a 1-2-1 one, one earlier in the match. It is Richie who got the better of Nico in a UK Open qualifier 10 years ago. Not really sure why I'm mentioning that because it has no significance at all on this one. Let's hand over to our commentary team for this next match. Thanks, Abby. Yes, well... Who knows if it does or not, because Paul Nicholson's smirking down there. Maybe he'd forgotten about that, and maybe now it does have significance, because he's heard you mention it, and he can blame you if he goes on to lose a game. And it wouldn't be the first time, would it, that Paul Nicholson has blamed things away from his own darts in an arena. That was around 10 years ago as well. Anyway, moving on, Richie Housen, who did produce those two fabulous finishers one of them we just saw, the one six one to win the game against Tony O'Shea. Looking for his second win of the night. Paul Nicholson looking for his first, having lost out in a last leg decider to Andy Jenkins. And then since then, Tony O'Shea bouncing back with a 4-0 victory. How Paul Nicholson would love to follow suit. Indeed, he would. Richie Housen then looking to back up the 4-3 win against O'Shea, following that one six one checkout. Seniors World Masters semi-finalist in 2022. And so what will the first meeting between this pair for over 10 years provide? Yeah, that was around the time that Houston was on the PDT Tour. It was a very brief spell that he had as a, a tour card One holder, Richie Houston. That's made more of a name for himself on the Seniors Tour. You mentioned that run to the semi-finals. I was at that tournament and many people thought he was going to go on and win it. It went to David Cameron on that occasion. One on the own, 40. Not that one. Now's not the time to talk about politics, Murph. One on the own, 40. Well, it is question time now for you, Henry. What did you make of Nicholson's return? It's one match. Maybe match two would be a better one to judge him on, having had a game on one the stage. Own 40. But the one crucial thing that was a difference was that he couldn't find anything in that last leg decider. And this is where not being in that heat of battle will come into play early on. Now, the difference one on own 40. that Nico has compared to Mace is Chris knew he had a five-day stint. He could work his way into things. So if it didn't quite work out in Group A, he had something to fall back on on Thursday and Friday. Paul hasn't one got that. He's in the shortest course 100. race that we have here in the Group Pool stages of the Super Series. He has to get out the blocks flying, a bit like Richie Housen's done here, leaving a ton after nine. Goes tops, tops. 18. And almost getting Paul, tops, tops. Well, did you see the Paul Pier? over the shoulder of Rich House, and like he was an owl perched on it. He wasn't sure whether that first start had gone in tops. It had found the bottom, and it nestled very well for Houston, who Paul probably would have expected to take that out. Now he's looking at the ball. 34. Can't dish out to Houston a dose of his own 20. medicine. So double 10. It's been a friend to him already tonight. And it was in a similar circumstance to this, where he missed the first on the outside wire yeah, like that. Got the second. The I promise you that was Richie live and Housen. not a replay. Richie Housen gets his account for this game up and running, leading Paul Nicholson by a leg to nil. Second leg is for the throw first. 
Game on. We mentioned Housen's runs at the Circus Tavern and the Lakeside, where he played in the World Seniors Masters. Got the better of Terry Jenkins, Trina Gulliver, and Keith Della. A bit of a who's who, points. isn't it? Not bad scalps to have on the darting CV. Particularly when they were looking at him thinking, who's he? But he's made a name for himself this year. Of course, lives just 10 minutes up the road from the Circus Tavern, 41. where he beat Daryl Fitton before losing to that inspired performance from Martin Adams. Nicholson himself had his landmark moment at the Circus Tavern. Remarkable, really, that the following year, 100. he didn't finish high enough on the Pro Tour Order of Merit to defend the Players' Championship title. Interestingly, that competition the following year was played twice. One on the own 40. Yeah, once early and once late in the year, where it, net, where it stayed since. Nicholson, one of the few players to have uh, won a major tournament and then not been selected for the Premier League. 81. Yeah, traditionally, it was the first tournament of the calendar year in the PDC system, where they went on the rankings of the 12 months prior. And that's been replaced with the Masters now, a non ranked event, although next year the PDC are going to be having a couple of World One Series events 40. in January. Bahrain in January, not bad work if you can get it. Fifty-two. Nicholson could be in trouble here. A ton or more for Housen, and he's looking likely to break the throw at the first available opportunity. 45. Oh, that is just music to the ears of Paul Nicholson. That is about as good as he could have hoped for. As bad as he could have hoped for, if you like, from Richie Housen. And he is looking to take full advantage. One Goes for the 170. Richie, he will take it. 83 is a second prize. Housen back on 135. And he may have protected the throw with that visit. Or has he protected the throw with that visit? But every time he's gone for the ball, he's hit it, Richie Housen. This is quite incredible. 95. What a hat trick of checkouts that would have been. 83. The good job we don't do bull ups here at the Super Series because Housen will be throwing first in every match. 16s. Right, give Richie the dart. He'll show you where it is. Yeah, that's, that's where it sure is. Paul Nicholson line. finds Paul it Nicholson. to level the match at one apiece. We love a bit of bully here at the Super Series. Oh, you can see first. the puncture marks yeah. all over that bed. Yeah, Richie Housen, absolutely sublime. I'm sure he hasn't been for it any other time than the 1 2 1, the 1 6 1, and then. The start of the one three five. So three times he's thrown at the ball, three times he's hit it. Do you reckon he should start the vid on the ball? Well, it wouldn't be the first player to do it. Raymond Van Barnevel once started on the ball at the World Grand Prix. One hundred. Granted, that was after he'd missed about twenty-four darts at the outer ring, and his opponent was already on a double. Don't let the facts get out of the way of a good story, though. It was his first scoring dart. 85. Good standard, this. I know we're only a couple of legs into it, but both players showcasing their capabilities, and Nicholson does look a little more settled. 85. No maximums as of yet, but have a look at the Tum 40 plus column. Four to three in Housen's favour. Both players have hit as many, 16. if not more, 140 pluses as they have Tum pluses in this game so far. It's another tight tense tungsten battle here on the newly renamed Tungsten Thursday. We'll have One Decision Day 40. tomorrow on Friday where... Both Group C and Group B will be decided. Join us on Sporty Stuff TV from half past nine tomorrow morning for the conclusion of Group C. And then we'll round things off here 16. in Group B tomorrow from 10. But who will be the proclaimers 
That will be at the top of the group who will be the movers and shakers on the opening day that could get themselves into pole position as the lights go out on Friday evening here at the Live Lounge. Well, I know all the talk has been about Paul Nicholson, rightly, but Richie Housen has a chance to be in pole position, doesn't he, if he can get over the line in this match. Really needs to find a couple of trebles. He will be hoping for even more than that now. Oh, what timing oh, no. to pile the pressure on the 93. Now, that Gee, might make Paul, Paul Nicholson change his plan here. He might have been thinking about the treble and now may go for the bull. No, he stays with the treble. I think double-double now is a shot. It's funny, you very rarely Richie see requires six players go double-double when they've got 74 left, for example. But when they've got 76 left, they do. Yeah, when you would think as Housen sneaks that double Richie eight Houston. into the bottom corner, where you would think on 76, you throw at the treble 20 bed Ford the whole leg long. First. So Demon. it makes sense to go for that. But on 74, when you... It goes back to our little argument we had earlier. Look, for me, if you if you think your opponent's... If your opponent's on a double, you've got two darts left, and you can go double-double, do it. It's a bigger area. Paul Nicholson, of course... 25. I mean, there are a couple of ways you can go. Paul Nicholson's already hit double-17 to win a leg today. He could have utilised that segment again. We saw Steve Brown do this a few weeks ago, where he 16. went double-17 tops and got it. Now, going back to our devil's advocate of earlier, there is a train of thought here as we await the fourth leg of this match to get underway that we said earlier that sometimes there's less utilised doubles on the board and because of that, people aren't quite as wanting to go for it. They will go for something that's smaller, but they use more often in play. And maybe that's why they do go for a double-double on the, the 76 route because they'll go for double top, double 18 quite often in games. Although we do see as well a lot of players choosing to go for double, double when they can throw two at the same double. So they might go two double 19s for that short or two double 18s for 72. I think there's just a little bit of a, a technical issue here with the scoreboard, which is why Paul Nicholson's standing back and waiting. So we'll just take the moment to, to recap what's happened so far this evening. A 4-3 win for Richie Housen in the first match against Tony O'Shea. Andy Jenkins getting over the line in the last leg decider against Paul Nicholson. Then O'Shea bouncing back with a 4-0 against Wes Newton. From what you've seen so far, Henry, who is the, the standout star, or is there even a standout star in this group? Who's the man to beat? I think we're going to have to wait for every player to play twice tonight to really find that out, because... We've seen bits and bobs from our players so far. Even in the case of Andy Jenkins, who we've only seen play once so far this evening, we've seen some good stuff, but we've also seen a little bit of ropey stuff as well from, from Rocky at times. So I think as soon as the players have played twice this evening, I think we'll get a, a better picture of how our players will match up. So we will see Andy Jenkins in his second match. Following this one, he will take on Wes Newton, Paul Nicholson and Richie Housen currently in battle. Housen leads... 2-1 in this one. He has had the, the standout moments of the night, hasn't he, Richie House, and taking out the 1-2-1 one, one, and the 1-6-1. One, one. Most definitely. They have been the highlights of the which you can see on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel after the conclusion of this session. And, of course, the six players then go through to Champions Week, or will go, will go through to the final to get to Champions Week, which is next week. Now, we know 11 of the... 12 players in that particular field, Murph, and you know exactly where I'm going with this particular question. Who at the minute for you would be the favourite of the 11 players that have qualified for Champions? Just before I get your answer, just to tell you who is there, is Robert Owen, Chaz Barstow, Graham Hall, Dowell Pilgrim, Lee Evans, Kieran Tian, Graham Usher, Conan Whitehead, Scott Williams, Gavin Carney and Peter Jakes. Yeah, well, it'd be easy to say Mark Dubridge, wouldn't it? Because he's the man that's already through. But he, he himself didn't fill me with confidence in the way that he was speaking about his own performances. I think Chris Mason's got a certain swagger about him at the moment. And the way that he's got through a couple of battles today, if he can get to finals night, which is more a when than an if now, um, I think, you know, he's, he's got as good a chance as anybody. So watch out for Mace the Ace. And uh, maybe instead of being in this chair, he'll be on that stage Come Saturday night, let's let's throw the question back to you. 
I think Chris, I'd say, is as good as Fru. I think he probably needs one victory tomorrow, which I can see him getting. From Group C, I, I don't want to call the second place. I'm not sitting on the fence. I just I just cannot calculate it. And obviously, it's too early in Group B to, to say he'll get through. I mean, I, I think Tony O'Shea will get through. I think Andy Jenkins will get through. I can't decide on the final spot. Let's just... Uh, let's to borrow a phrase from you, play devil's advocate. Let's forget about Chris Mason, assuming he's already through, and Mark Dubridge, who is already through. Out of all of the other players, if you were to pick one, not only to get through, but to get through to Champions Week. Where would you put your 50 pence? Andy Jenkins. Just because if you look at this year, he's won a Challenge Tour, high up on that order of merit. If you actually look at what's been done in 2022, Andy Jenkins has the CV out of these players. So for that basis, you'd have to go with him. Yeah, so just an update on what's happening here at the moment. There's just been a slight technical issue with the scoring system. We don't have markers on the stage here at the Super Series, so sometimes uh, technology can go a little bit wrong. It's just been sorted out right now, which is why you're seeing a conversation between myself and Henry while Paul Nicholson and Richie Housen patiently wait for the game to resume. Don't worry if you need to get up and make yourself a cup of tea or something. You'll hear us call the game back on. Uh, but in the meantime, we're just going to uh, have a, a little look ahead to that, that Champions Week. You read out all the names. Let's go even further, Henry. Who would you pick as your favourite from the players that have qualified to go and win next week? First of all, I'm glad the turtleneck actually made an appearance on camera this evening. But um, out of the 11 players so far, I've, I've said it since he's qualified. I will not stop now. Graham Usher for me. And I would give you my prediction, but we're about to get the game back underway. So Paul Nicholson has a throw at the moment, having scored 25 with his opening visit in this leg. Alton has responded with a 60. There was a ton there, which I'm assuming was on Nicholson. As ah, here we are, back on the screen. You don't have to look at our <laughs> faces anymore. Yeah, 100 on return from Nico. 100. And matched by Richie Housen. Tell you what, seeing our faces at quarter to 12 on the TV, that's probably the stuff of nightmares, isn't it? Speak for yourself. <laughs> 100. The other thing is, that thing does happen from time to time. Not very often, but Paul Nicholson will have seen it happen. And maybe it would be easier for him to adapt to that kind of thing than, than Richie Housen, who, you know, might be a bit frustrated by it, especially when leading the match 2 1 and Paul Nicholson had only scored 25 16. with his first visit. He has been here before and he does watch this competition a lot. So even though it may be new in terms of experience, Experiencing it firsthand, he will know every single scenario that takes place in this competition. Well, it doesn't look as if it's affected Nico because ton backed by another ton, backed by a 140, puts him in control of the fourth leg with the throw and leaving 136 after 12. 16. Apparently, Paul Four Nicholson, during that 36. break, looked up. There's some big screens behind the stage and he saw our, our faces on there and he just remarked, so. Oh, they're going to run out of things to talk about. I've been there myself. I don't think Paul Nicholson's ever run out of things to talk about. 100. I'll admit I almost did. Back in the nick of time. And in the nick of time, Nicholson might be about to level the match. 100. For so double 18 to level us up at two apiece. Cross for double nine. 18. Richie, you require 121. Well, we know that he'll fancy the bull if he only gets one treble. Yeah, it's a finisher he's already taken out. And we know he'll hit the bull because every single time he's gone for it, he's hit it. 96. Finally, he proves Four, that he's not got some 18. kind of robotic arm that has got a preset to the bullseye and it gives nico another chance yeah, a chance he takes ball nicholson all square at 2-2 two, two. now just wonder after that little Fifth bit of an interval that we had between legs game on 
how important it was to win that first afterwards. We often say it in, in TV televised tournaments, don't we, when we have an advertising break or something like that for the TV companies. That the first leg after that break could be oh so crucial. It was pretty much a similar situation here. Yeah, particularly because it's a, an unscheduled break. I'm not a big subscriber to that. The break 16. making much of a difference in in darts tournaments. Some some players, I think, if you let it affect you, then that's why it will affect you. It's almost a choice. One hundred. I think if a player's playing well, they'll back themselves to continue playing well after a short break. As much as they would if they didn't have one. They're both playing pretty well in this one. 100. Similar stats. Three points in the averages. And exactly the same checkout success rates. Hitting a third of their 55. double attempts. Housen has the matches only maximum. But Paul Nicholson with more scores of more than a hundred. Forty five. So and that is the tail of the tape thus far. But how will this starting contest end up? Fifty nine. And of course you can get in contact with us here at the Mojo Super Series. We're at MSS Darts on Twitter. You can also get in touch with myself and Murph as well. We'd love to hear your thoughts as we approach the midnight hour. One hundred and forty. Yeah, a couple of people have been in touch, uh, joining in on the conversation that we just had. And Graham Usher is getting a lot of love in terms of a player, a pick to win Champions Week. Great player to watch, Graham Usher. Proper speedster, isn't he? Four, you require one hundred and fifty-six. And one interesting tweet saying they can't decide whether they prefer Mason and Nicholson as commentators or players. Both fun to watch in either role. 60. I know in which role they have the most fun. 92. Certainly isn't sitting next to me five days a week. 84 then for Richie Housen. So needed that treble to get a dart. And it's a chance for Paul Nicholson. 36. To get his nose in front. Paul, you require 96. Yeah, crucial moment here. This could be for a break of throw for the asset. If Housen knew... Sense have two at double. Can he go double double? Yes, he did decide to go double double. It didn't 56. quite work out. What Richie did I say? He'll do it on 76, 56. but wouldn't do it on 74. I'm going to have real words with him about that. Double top. He'd actually like to have another dart double top with that one, uh, but he's got to settle for double 10, bag. and Richie it's not Hudson. a problem for Housen, who hits the front once again. All on throwing this game so far, and if it stays like that, it will be maximum points Six flag, it's ball for the, the owl. First game on. If it stays like that, it'll be the third time in four matches we go to a deciding leg. Yeah, and another thing, looking at Richie Housen's last visit to the Super Series or the Live League as it 57. was then, none of his matches went 4-0. Mentioned it earlier. He was competitive in all of his games. So this isn't a surprise to me that he's getting to three legs. He's winning matches 4-2, 4-3. 44. This is what he has set himself the habit of doing. 114. Well, that is a turning of the screw visit there from Nicholson. Gives him a distinct advantage here in the sixth. Although well, that's a lovely lie with the first dart for House and couldn't. Follow it up with the second, 55. and it is advantage asset. So it may well go down to that last leg. Every single match, by the way, has been won tonight by the player not throwing first. 42. Seeing some frustration there from Paul Nicholson. Have to not allow it to be... Self-destruction from here on in. One hundred and fourteen. Spoken about the difference between being a commentator and a player for those players who do have two roles. I mean, you can see Paul Nicholson there donning Talk Sport 2 on his shirt. 
quite remarkable, Henry, that he actually commentated on the match that saw him lose his tour card. What a strange position to be sat in. An unthinkable position to, to be put in front of. And full credit to him was the fact that we see a lot of pundits in sport talk about me, 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 me. Nicholson just commentated on the match as it was, knowing the circumstances, which says a lot about him as a broadcaster. But it's about Nicholson, the player here. He couldn't get the second shovel 19. He's got 88 19, left, so went across for the 16s. And so Halson now, he won his first match with a 161. Can he top it with a 164? Well, might have actually been better suited to throwing a treble 19 there, Richie Halson. A couple of those Ball gives him a, a shot of the bullseye. Paul Nicholson, though, can't afford to slip up here. Treble 16 is the target. Double 12 is now the target. Double 6. The fourth to last leg shootout. 66. It gets away from Nicholson. And now Housen has a chance to double his points tally for tonight. So he's going to get one dart. A double 16 for 4 2 win. 37. He'd have been better off going for the ball, Henry. Ball you require 6. D3 or S2, D2. Straight for it, it looks like. And now it's one for double one. No score. Can't get there and surely now you require you'd put your house on house and... This is to double up in Group B Game. and to Short take the early match. charge in Group B. Richie Housen gets the better of Paul Nicholson by four legs to two with an average of 85.66. The game's solitary maximum four from ten on the doubles. Nicholson had darts to take us to yet another deciding leg here in Group B, but it is... Housen, the Owl, who's having a hoot here at the Super Series so far. Two wins from two for him. We're going to take a short break. Upon our return, we're going to see Andy Jenkins in action up against Wes Newton.
Good evening and welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Richie Housen has just recorded his second victory of the evening. A 4-2 win over Paul Nicholson in that one. Well, we've been talking a lot of bull so far this evening, haven't we? And that's not me criticising our wonderful comms team. Housen won two legs on the bull in his opening match. He also hit it at the start of a combination in that game, but it was Nico who pinned it to level things early on at one apiece in that match. The match going with throw until the sixth leg Nico unable to pin the double to take the game to a decider though and the owl gets his second victory of the evening session up next then we've got Andy Jenkins up against Wes Newton Wes Newton blown away by O'Shea in his opening match he was naught from four on the outer ring in that match but there we can see Andy Jenkins pinning double four to get the victory over Paul Nicholson and get his first two points on the board let's find out then who comes out on top in this one and return to our commentary team yeah thanks Abby yeah you're right is on the stage where the bulls hitting is happening this evening here at the Moda Super Series. But no double at all was hit by Wes Newton in that first match. And we mentioned that Paul Nicholson could find himself in a spot of bother. Well, no need to panic with a couple of defeats just yet. But for Wes Newton, another heavy defeat and really does have a mountain to climb, the Fleetwood Flinger. Indeed he does. Lost 4-0 to light. Tony O'Shea in game, game three. One. Both these players will complete their second round of matches. We'll be at the midway point of our evening session here at the 26. Super Series. We'll be heading into Friday morning very shortly. 16. But as I said a few weeks ago, it's Friday and we love the darts, Murph. Yeah, and so far this evening, it's been the owl 58. who has been thriving. No surprise there. Richie House on top of the tree after two wins from two matches. Paul Nicholson, two defeats from two. Tony O'Shea, one win from two. 100. Andy Jenkins, one win from one. And Wes Newton, one defeat from one. I mentioned during our little 58. interlude that we had in the middle of the last game that don't judge Group B because the way the fixtures just lie because it's a five-player group until both players 57. or all the five players have played two matches in the group. Then you get an accurate representation of possibly where the group 75. lies. Well, it's usually... A couple of things that happen, maybe three things, three different scenarios play out in Group B. One is that you get a runaway leader 44. and the other four battle it out for the other two spots. Another is you get two players fighting out for top spot and the other three battle it out for two spots. The third way is that you get three players One of them, head and shoulders and everything is settled by around this time tomorrow. That's what happened last week. Five matches left to play and we knew which three players were going through to finals night from the group. 100, and you require 74. Now, Andy Jenkins winning this match would be an early indication that we're going to get one of those two yeah, scenarios. Yeah, that's in the first leg. Andy Jenkins. And he takes the first leg with a plum. A lovely 74 checkout from Jenks. Second leg is West throw first. Who has played Game Wes Newton many a time. And you mentioned this afternoon, didn't you, Henry, that one of the head-to-head records went over two pages. This was it, Andy One Jenkins and, and Wes Newton. Many, many meetings. The most recent being in the Challenge Tour in 2018, but they played loads of times when they were both on the professional tour as well. The standout tie was a win for Wes Newton at a pro tour in Barnsley 10 years ago now, when he averaged 108.5 in Rocking 65. Rocky that day. And interesting as well, when you look at the head-to-head, -head, some of the places where players' championships are held, the Isle of Wight, UK Open qualifier in Sheffield, Tynemouth, One on the Irvine, 36. A Bad Newheim, I hope I've got that right, the Sheppey Classic, 96. Killarney, Canada, 
Max other places? Yeah, the, the interesting one is that the, the most near to here that they've met is actually overseas. 41. That tournament in the Isle of Wight, the very first meeting back in 05, Jenkins won 3 1. He was an established player 99. then, wasn't he? Wasn't he? It was a young upstart. Back in those days. That was set play as well. I was about to say he may start on the ball, and he has done. I like that 19. route when your opponent's not on a finish. 1 2 2 starting on the ball. I see the sense in it. He gets the Murphy seal of approval. Required 32. Because it gives him free at double 16. No score. And you require the closer, 146. no cigar for Wes Newton. So Jenkins returns to 146 to double up his lead. That's not going to happen. And so Newton will return for another free at the green bit. This time he can't afford to miss. 130. West should require 32. Awkward. Even though it's so far away, because of the, the Wes Newton lean, he's locking himself out here. Well, this would be no score. a real magic Any trick if he managed 16. to find a way through that. A proper act of escapology. No score. Well, Andy Jenkins puts three on the wire. What a bizarre 32. end to this leg. And he's had to move all the way across because that double yeah, leg is blocked. Second but he manages West to Newton. somehow, some way, find a way of squeezing it into the bottom left-hand corner. And we are level Third at one apiece. First game on. Go on, how did he get it in the bottom left-hand corner again? <laughs> I feel like that's going to go on the end of your <laughs> blooper reel, isn't 22. it? 22. I promise you he wasn't going down a slide at the time. <laughs> Tell you what, though, Wes Newton, despite getting Nine that, he cannot five. feel comfortable because he's, the last few darts he's thrown have not been anywhere near where he would have wanted them to land, how he would have wanted them to land. 80. And that certainly isn't where he would have hoped it landed, on the floor. You haven't had the feeling that either of these players have felt settled in this match at any period in time. Yeah, it's been erratic at best. One but that's the best we've seen. A brilliant maximum from Wes Newton, his first of the evening. Having just won his first leg of the One evening. And forty. And it suddenly kickstarts Jenkins into life. Maybe we have found that spark. 97, and the Uruguay 96. 96 for Jenkins to re-establish the lead for 2 on Trouble 17 would have left him a dart at top, so Newton back for 1-2-2. Two, two. That slipped into the Trouble 11, so Lee's in 41 if he returns. He may not return. Thirty-eight, and you require forty-one. The lead. Thirty-two. Yeah, that's game short and a third leg. Sneaks Andy it in. Jenkins. Use the guide to get there, and Andy Jenkins is halfway there in this match. Definitely Ford didn't squeeze that one in, did he? First game on. Kind of bouncing off that barrel. Seventy. Both players' darts actually have a slight lead across to the right, 44. but Wes Newton has always been so much more pronounced than probably any player I've ever seen, and it's probably one of the reasons why he gets more bounce outs than most, because you're kind of getting one, one the end, 20 side five. of the point penetrating the board first. The angle of entry is not plumb. Almost like the sharpest part of the dart is not 81. the bit that goes in the board first. The wise play on 306, him downstairs with the first dart. And, well, there goes your point about 39. bounce outs and Wes Newton. 
You know, because his darts going at an angle, such it only takes a little deflection, and all of a sudden they're almost taking the board sideways. Seventeen. One hundred. Big last start to leave Newton on a finish after twelve. Well, Andy should, should have thought about that. He should have gone down 19's first dart. That's a mistake from Rocky. Because it's afforded Newton. Six here. Seven. Might yeah. need the lot, if not more. Yeah, having said that, Jenkins would have still needed to find a couple of trebles. He's found a couple of singles here and now needs a treble. 26. Where should require 160? Newton let off here, really. Another in there. Well, this would be an oasis of excellence, wouldn't it? 120. One hundred and eighteen. Where should require 40? He said there's not been much of an oasis of excellence. Twenty. And after all, it and might not be to all. May well go the way of Jenkins now. He's huffed and puffed his way through this leg. But double 16 will get him a break yeah, of throw. And it and is the board leg. Andy Jenkins. a leg that goes next to the name of Andy Jenkins. But Wes Newton will feel like he threw it away. Fifth leg. It's Missed Andy four the darts first. Game on. to win that leg. Remember, treble 20, treble 20 was found. The 160 attempt, he missed the double. One on the name, And then 40. missed it on three more occasions. Jenkins cleans up the 62 to go with the 74 from earlier in the match. And that's the reason why he's winning the match. One on the name, 12 40. missed darts, a double by Wes Newton. Only four by Andy Jenkins. Well, that's a dirty 54. dozen, that, isn't it, for Newton? That he will want to forget in a hurry. And it is one of those 58. games, isn't it, where the winner will just want to get off stage as quickly as possible. And the positive will be, well, there's two points next to my name. 87. Newton should start on the 19s here. Does so. 59. One hundred and thirty-four. He elected to switch only Jenkins backed himself to find the treble. Ended up finding two, and now is round the last corner 60. and hurtling towards the checkered flag. Eighty-six. The canny cross, the winning line, double sixteen. Game. We'll seal Short. the win and the match. for Andy, Andy Jenkins, Jenkins, who goes two from two. In Group B, he joins Richie Housen on four points in the table with a 4-1 victory against Wes Newton, who is still without a point in the early stages of this group. An 80.29 average for Rocky. Newton had the Sochi Max in the match, but it's the one from 13 on the doubles bed that was his undoing in the end. So... It's double up for Andy Jenkins. After the break, we are going to see the battle of the commentators as Tony O'Shea takes on Paul Nicholson.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Andy Jenkins has just recorded his second victory of the night. Chris Murphy alongside me. Murph, when we started the show, we talked about maybe an advantage that the players who've already played this week might have. It's not panning out that way, though, is it? Because the only victory for someone who's already played this week was Tony O'Shea, but he was playing the other person who'd played in Group A as well. It's not panned out as we might have thought. No, it hasn't. You did talk about that at the start of the show. You're right. Yeah, I don't know why you mentioned that, but... Tony O'Shea, I mean, he was good in that game, wasn't he, against Wes Newton, let's be fair. And I, I actually think playing the evening session probably suits most players. But yeah, Wes Newton surprised me so far. He hasn't got going at all, um, and he could leave himself a bit of a mountain to climb. And so far, it's, it's um, Housen's finishing who's really stolen the show, isn't it? Yeah, those two brilliant bullseyes um, in that first match. Again, against Tony O'Shea, so... Without those, he could be one of the players that's got a couple of wins to his name, but they were fantastic. And Richie Housen has shown here and at the seniors that he's a real tenacious tungsten terrier. He has indeed, and it's Tony O'Shea who is up next. We're going to see him taking out that 81 in his victory over Wes Newton. He's up against Paul Nicholson. They met at Q School in 2020, and it was Nico who came out a comfortable winner in that one. Do you see this one going that same way? How do you see it? I don't think Paul Nicholson needs to get um, a win in, in a bit of a battle. It's kind of similar to, to how it was for Chris Mason earlier on. He was winning the games that he was comfortable in when he was winning 4-0, 4-1, but Paul's been involved in a couple of battles, and I think just that lack of competitive match practice is showing so far. You probably can hear me and probably won't thank me for saying that, but he would say what he could see if he was here, so I can only do the same. He would indeed. Right then, let's get into this one. I can feel the daggers going into Chris Murphy's back as we're wrapping this one up. Let's get into it. Henry, back over to you. Thank you very much, Abby. But both of these players have done plenty of punditry and commentary in the past, so they know it's just part and parcel of the game but it's very much Paul Nicholson and Tony O'Shea the players on stage in game six of our evening both of these two worked together at the Lakeside World Championships back in April alongside my country colleague Chris Murphy so they were accustomed to each other in that particular capacity but it is on stage this evening for these two and a competitive meeting between the pair They've only met once in a competitive match. Now, that came at Q School like back in 2020. And it was Paul Nicholson that came out the victor against the Silverback by five legs to one. Perhaps not a surprise that we haven't seen these two play often in competitive action. Nicholson, a uh, PDC player for many years. Antonio Shea, a stalwart of the BDO in the past. But they come together here at the Super Series. And talking about commentators. Glad to see you made it down in one piece in the end, Chris. Yeah, I was going to have the game off, Henry, leave you to it, but quite excited for this one. 85. Paul Nicholson, yeah, I do feel that he needs to get a win sooner rather than later, or we could see him just start to get annoyed with himself, get frustrated. He is a player who takes it incredibly seriously. He's intense. He's one of those who'll practice with headphones and try and get into his own little zone, Paul Nicholson. 81. And when things aren't going well, it can be a very lonely place. As you're looking to make the country box for me. You see, you've had the game off. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I've, I'm doing two jobs tonight, Henry. 55. I think I deserve it. Tony O'Shea winning that match 4-0 against Wes Newton and really losing to Richie Housen by virtue of two fantastic finishers from the Owl. So he will be quite happy with how things have gone. A narrow defeat and a very, very heavy win. It's Paul Nicholson's mantra, isn't it, here at the... The Super Series. Lose tight, but win big. And that's exactly what Tony's done. Sixty. Paul, you require 160. So Nicholson first to finish. 160 for the opening leg against the dart. So Shea back on 140 himself. Another one of them. 
Would have left him a crack at tops, but O'Shea will return 140. for 140. So 140. Not that O'Shea wants it that way. Another in there. Would have left him double 10. Nicholson will go for that target when he comes back. 90. Paul, you require 20. Big adjustment needed. Smaller one now, but having to step across. O'Shea not watching. No score. But now he will have heard Johnny, that call from Marco Meyer. And knows he has the chance to edge ahead. Two sixteens for Tony. Eighteen. But those chances go a begging, and so Nicholson will return 20. for the double ten for the break. Yeah, that's game short in the first. Well, maybe line. just got the little Four bit of luck that he needed there with Tony O'Shea out of sorts at the start of this one. Based on what we've seen so far tonight. Now, Second Henry, gets the throw without first. a Paul Nicholson Jim. or a Chris Mason alongside me, it falls to you to to be the giver of opinions. And you did say that you wouldn't judge this group until everybody has played two games. Well, they all have now, so 16. judge the group. I will judge, Your Honour. So, my verdict. Jenkins and House are now the two players to beat. They're the two 100. at the top of it. And, and I think Tony O'Shea, probably outside of them two, has been the best player in this group. Nicholson's shown good stuff, but in patches. And Newton just not had... It's been one of those one nights for him. 40. It's about the first time that I've ever had to give a verdict, and it's being not guilty. Yeah, 63. Well, I'm not sure what the verdict was, Henry, there. Basically, we got two players at the top of the group who I think may have a way with things, and I think we might have a jostle for third place, but I think O'Shea's the favourite for it. I think if, if, that's case, it's, if that's the case, it's pretty good for the players that are yet to pick up wins, isn't it? Because it means that they're not going to be out of it after one night. And anyone can have a bad night at the office. And I think in this group, this is argument for all the players before a dart was thrown so if one player can go and win four matches one night no reason why a different player can't do it the next night we've seen that many times in group b we've one seen players bottom of the group five. overnight go on and qualify for the finals it's not out the realms of conceivability and it's definitely not out of the realms of conceivability here it's probably the favourite outcome that paul nicholson's going to open up a 2-0 nine. lead here Paul's on the silver back 76 after 12 yeah, it's a hat trick of three figure visits to get him there. 16. And tops for 2 0. 56. Well, that one took a nosedive, but Tony on a big combination checkout. 1 4 4. And you would have fancied him if the first dart went in the treble because of the way. 96. He likes to group around that treble 20, 20 bed. So Nicholson returns then for. Double 10, this is for a 16 dart leg. 2 0 lead. We saw him have problems here in the last leg. Yeah, that's game shot. No the problem leg. for Paul Four in Nicholson. this one. And he leads O'Shea by two legs to nil. Now, these two players, Murph, are like regular commentators first. on our on. TV screens and radio sets. I'm going to pose you this question. Top five all-time pundits in terms of their playing career so players who have now turned to punditry in terms of what they achieved in their playing career top five of all time i mean you can't expect me to answer that in the space of 10 seconds can you give me a bit of time get involved 44. at home at mss dart top five pundit players of all time and there's some good ones to pick from. 60. And of course, you can include players who may do some work on Dutch TV stations. I know there's a player, maybe not in the minute, will get in the top five all the time, but works for a Belgian TV station whose birthday it is today. So many happy birthday returns to Brian Roman, who I know is a regular watcher of this competition. 
Yeah, sorry, Brian, but you won't be making my top five, mate. One hundred. I'll give you one of the five. I'll give you one for all the remaining matches tonight. How about that? Drip feed. Yeah, so the first one I'm going to say, John Parts. I think, yeah, I think we, I, I reckon we're going to be quite close on our, on our list here, I think. Well, we will see. We've seen one of the players who now actually just calls himself a commentator, Chris Mason, saying that's how he's best known for just some excellent stuff this week. Tony O'Shea's never called himself a commentator when he rocks up at Lakeside. He, he doesn't see himself as that. He sees himself as a player sat in the commentary box. I wonder what position Paul Nicholson right. feels. Is he Tony a commentator playing 66. now or a player playing again? That was an excellent maximum from the silver back to put himself in pole position in leg 46. three. And he will have three more darts at double at least. To bring it back to two on, all Nicholson can do is apply pressure. He's going down on the 187. Just see him shaking his head there. 45. And this is the thing. Tony He's 2-0 up in the match. 20. Tony O'Shea holding his throw shouldn't be a problem to Paul Nicholson at this point. Just needs to keep calm and carry yeah, on. Game than a Don't worry about Tony the odd O'Shea. loose start here and there. There's bound to be some rustiness, having not thrown competitively for the best part of three years. Board like it's pull the throw first. Game on. It's these legs that are the crucial ones for the asset. So when he's got the darts at two and up, where he knows he can't afford to be broken, be brought back 16. to two apiece. And there is a bit of a trend in this game because three legs plate, three legs one on double ten. 16. Yeah, the issue with that, it, it usually means you're missing a double to get there. So basically, what we're saying to the spotter is just keep on double 10, they'll probably hit it. 60. We have seen 43. 10 darts missed at double between the pair of them in this match. Across the first three legs. No real fireworks yet in the game, it's just one that's simmering away. 45. Like a broken kettle that's yet to get to the boil. Tony O'Shea and, and Paul Nicholson know each other well. We, we mentioned 59. that you know they haven't played an awful lot against each other. You mentioned that previous meetings before, and Abby did at the the start of this match, but actually did work together earlier this year, didn't they, at the WDF World Championship? So 41 not actually the kind of guy that Paul Nicholson is. It's not the ideal match for him here. He wants to play someone that he can really get fired up against. It's impossible not to like Tony O'Shea. 59. He's the most, one of the most likeable people in darts. You know, a lot of people used to criticise Paul Nicholson's antics when he was the, the so-called bad boy of darts, but looking back, it's actually when he played his best stuff. 100. So what you're saying is he needs to go and find a pair of Ray-Bans tomorrow afternoon, find a shirt and tie. But just maybe needs to find a little bit of aggression again in his game. Doesn't have to go to that extreme anymore. 58. But you just do see some players who, who just seem to play better darts when they've got the bit between the teeth. Gary Anderson, case in point. One on the Perfect setup for Moshe. You require Forces Nicholson to take the 144 to hold. Yeah, and this would be a problem getting broken here for Paul Nicholson. Opted for the 18's route. Wayward on it, and Tony can take out tops. 84. To so draw level 14. in the match, but effectively get on top because he would have the throw in two of the last three legs. Well, it's double ten again. Thirty. And the leg could still be one on that, Four Henry. Paul requires sixty. Paul Nicholson, I hope that's not the case because he'll get it first dart at tops. 
as we get to single 20. And they collide off that. Collides into it, and it is double 10. Yeah, and it remains the, the only ball double ball that's been hit in this Mickelson. game. But crucially, it's a double that puts Paul Nicholson one leg away from his first victory on his return to, to competitive action. Tony O'Shea has missed three darts for 2-2. Two, two. And now it's all about a response for the silverback. That bounce, that will not help 18. its cause. And so an opening for Nicholson here. As Chris rightly said, for his first competitive victory in nearly three years. Although, you want to shake off that first dart metaphorically and seemingly literally. 14. Not the start that he needed. But it's catching. 81. Good recovery with the last start there from Tony O'Shea. Now, this is a position that Paul Nicholson hasn't really been in. He was in a fight with Andy Jenkins. He did get two, three legs against Jenkins. But 23. He's got a lead here. He's got time. And maybe he's just starting to think a little bit too much about tasting victory. He's a... 96. A quite competent cook, Paul Nicholson. But the taste of victory is one that he hasn't experienced for some time. If you're hoping to find the recipe for success in a few darts One time, it may blow. have to be in the next leg. That ton puts him around in touch with Tony, but a nice couple of troubles here for the silverback will be... One hundred and twenty-five. A sweet, sweet taste. It'll be like having that first chip in your fish and chips. One on own, what can 14. O'Shea serve up with a 119? Triple 20. For the double. 99. 4 3 2. Conceivably, we could have another leg one on double 10. That would be five in a row. Yeah, just one of the strange coincidences that can happen in this game. Although there'll be some pressure on this. One on the oh, what a visit that is from Nicholson. Tony, you require 20. To leave himself on double 12. And that's got a little awkward for O'Shea. And now he wants double four. 16. Four, you require 24. For the match. For his first competitive victory. Double three. 18. But the asset Tony will not cross the line four. just yet. You know, there may well be something in it that the fact that the best visit or the best visit of that leg for Paul Nicholson were when he felt he was out of the leg. The 140 and the 174. No score. Suddenly he's back in it and it's getting jittery four, again. Six. But O'Shea just keeps offering opportunities. 14 darts now missed at double for Tony O'Shea. Game. And Nicholson and gets match. over Paul the line. Nicholson. It's been a long time for Paul Nicholson, but it is the sweet smell of success, a victory for the first time at the Super Series, having lost his first two matches on his return to competitive darts. Hadn't played for almost three years, but he's won against Tony O'Shea, a result that makes this group very, very interesting indeed. He's off the mark in terms of points in the group. One of the big reasons, however, all those misses at double for Tony O'Shea. Paul Nicholson taking advantage and picking up his first points. Coming next, it's a couple of players that have taken maximum points so far as Richie Housen takes on Andy Jenkins.
Good evening and welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth where Paul Nicholson has just recorded his first ever victory at the Super Series. It was a 4-1 victory for him and as Chris Murphy said in commentary that felt like a big game for Nico. Early on he rose to the challenge establishing a 2-0 lead, his best leg, an 18 dart leg to win leg two. He'll still want to sharpen up on the finishing but for someone who came into this with no idea as to how he would play back on the stage. Some really good signs for him, especially when O'Shea applied the pressure and asked questions of him. He was four out of 14 on the outer ring. So as I said, that is something that will need to improve. Up next then, we have the Owl against Andy Jenkins. Both of these players have won both of their games so far in this one. And it was Housen who took out a double 16 in his last match to get the better of Paul Nicholson by four legs to two in that one. The only meeting between these two players of note came on the Challenge Tour in 2019. It was Housen who ran out the 5-1 victor in that one. Will this encounter be any closer? Let's find out and hand back over to our commentary team. Thank, thanks, Abby. Yes, it is a meeting between the Owl and the Pussycat here <laughs> as Richie Housen takes on Rocky Andy Jenkins, but he's got a soft centre, I can assure you of that. A battle, though, at the top of the table. Richie House and 56 years of age from Raynham in Essex reached that World Seniors Masters semi-final earlier this season, having kind of the year of his darting life, you'd have to say. Goes up against the King of Cosham, Mandy Jenkins, from just down the road here in our live lounge at first Portsmouth. Like hoping to be there on Saturday night team. so his friends can come and cheer him along. And the winner of this will take a step towards being there because they'll be on six points, maximum points from the first three matches. 16. Paul Nicholson has just picked up his first. Tony O'Shea also on two. Wes Newton yet to get off the mark, but has a couple of games to change that. All still to play for in Group B. 99. But you would think, Henry, whoever wins this one would be edging closer and sitting pretty at the top of the table. They could possibly dip a toe into the pool that is Saturday night's final. They wouldn't be swimming their way towards success as of yet, but they put themselves in a really good position. 57. You mentioned Andy Jenkins earlier, didn't you, Henry, that he's using these new flights. He's making adjustments 45. to playing with them on the big stage, having played some decent stuff in local tournaments with them. But you can just see him in the background. I don't know if he's quite settled with them yet. Playing with them, having a look at them. Don't know if we'll get the old trademark Rocky flights back out at some point this evening. One on the forty. He may have to find something trademark from this juncture. One on the that two trouble visit will five. just Richie about do the job, though it's left him on 99, which is the one finish in the sub 100 zone where you need all three darts at it. 100, and you require 99. Tops, tops. 59. Richie, you require 56. House and then to hold. Yeah, that's game shot. He does hold. Leg. Richie House. First blood to the owl in this top of the table tussle. Only one meeting of note between the pair in the Second past. Leg, it came and to throw first. On the challenge game tour on. in 2019, Richie House and ran out a 5 1 winner against Jenks on that occasion. 81. Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. Here we have a look at the two actions of the two players here. And there's a lot of 
action in the first 41. motion for Richie extends the arm out. Now, usually we see the arm extended out as the darts release, but his arm extends as he points up One to aim and then release the dart. As you can see here, extends, back, release, extends, back, release, and extends, back, release One on to almost 14. perfection. Andy Jenkins is always 100. something moving, sets himself for a microsecond before a quick swing. Could be on 18s here. Good thinking. 56. But needed to travel to leave a finish. 137. Andy Jenkins starting downstairs, which suggests he might have gone for top stops had he hit the treble, even though Alston wasn't on an out shot. Missed the big number, though, so he going to have to spurn one at double upon his return. And how much pressure can Halson put this under? I wonder. 100, and the Uruguay 54. So, so, 54 to level us up at one apiece. Tops yeah, will do it nicely for Andy Jenkins. Andy Jenkins. And we are level at 1-1. One, one. Third leg, it's Richard is now, first. game on game, game on. you're going to give us your pundit goat list, the top five player pundits of all time, based on their playing 43. career. You said part. I've also got part in my list. Yeah, next one. 99. Sadly no longer with us. Eric Bristow. Yes. Eighty-five. And how he would have loved the concept of the world seniors. One hundred. He would have got Andy Jenkins there. For the shades of Bristow himself, the way he reacted to that maximum. One hundred. And suddenly he's just brought it up a level. Ninety-seven point nine seven, the average. Leaves himself on the Desmond after six. 19. In cricket, they call it the Richie Benno. 100. And the Uruguay 132. No need to go for the ball here for Andy Jenkins. 100. Just happy to settle for leaving double 16 when he comes back. After 12, and as I say, he's seismically gone up the gears here. And the you require 32. So, double 16. No score. But it doesn't go, and Howson returns. Require 74. And despite the brilliance of Jenkins in the scoring department, He's one from four on the outer ring, and he could be severely punished here because yeah, Housen has two at double 16. He only Richie needs Housen. one for his second leg on the board. And Andy Jenkins, despite his dominance, finds himself behind. Forward like it's ended to throw first. Game on. Yeah, playing some decent stuff. You can see an eight-point disparity in the averages in favour of the player that is losing the match. But the advantage 58. of throw, the difference so far... In favour of Richie Housen. Two from three for Housen, one from four for Jenkins. That is 58. where this game has ultimately been swung. Ninety-nine. And just a reminder of how they got to where they are. Andy Jenkins enjoyed a four-three win against Paul Nicholson and a four-one success against Wes Newton Housen to join him on four points. Beat O'Shea 4-3 and Nicholson 4-2. So Andy Jenkins just a leg 85. better off. At the moment, at the top of the table, but Housen a leg better off in this match and therefore likely to be two points better off at the end of it. Could be two legs better off if he continues One firing in the 40. troubles. 
Leg up in the offing here. Downstairs to make sure he leaves himself. Want to finish? Leaves himself on one of those double chance shots where he can sling for the treble 18, and if he finds it with one of the darts, then he'll get a go at the bullseye. 60, and you require 122. So 18's a route for Jenkins. That's a nice little guide for the treble, which would have left him a go at the ball. And so Hauser needs something inspired here, otherwise this game could well be level in a few seconds' time. Could be inspired. Will he stay there? We'll go across for trouble 18. We'll stay there for double 13. Yeah, for a magnificent finish. And that could Richie turn Hudson. the Tungsten tide for sure. Andy Jenkins was left waiting Fifth on 68 to level us up. First. Game on. But Housen's finishing has been exemplary. It's been superb. That 146 adds. To the 161, the 121, he's free from four on the doubles in this match. 100. Well, last time he was here, Richie Houston, he played 10 matches and he took out four three figure combos. He's taken out three. 100. In three matches tonight. Two of them on the bullseye, and then that brilliant 146 to put himself firmly in control of this clash. One on an and on 14. course to top the table, winning all three of his matches so far. Andy Jenkins trying to rally. One on the end, 35. Not happy with the last start, but it is a real rocky rally that's needed. Fifty-seven. However, that fifty-seven has just opened it up for Jenkins. It has to go down now. Stays downstairs, 42, but comes up dry. And you can see the frustration on the face of Rocky. His house and now 204 points away with six darts in his hand to seal the 4-1 win. And he's going about his business quite nicely. Has a little look at the 100. scoreboard. Tunley's 104. Jenkins can only try and find something big. Does find something big. It doesn't get bigger than that. Richie, you require 104. 54. And he will get a go, but the remainder. 56, and you require 44. Andy Jenkins. Choosing double 16. One more dart to stay in it. 28. But he's missed. Richie, you require 48. So now Housen can home in on that 4-1 win that would see the owl fly high at the top of the tungsten tree. Game. And Shot. it is Housen and who is Richie top Housen. of Group B as he defeats Andy Jenkins by four legs to one. And the, the midnight hour is the hour of the owl against Jenkins with an 87.77 average Jenkins got the two maximums in the match, but as you can see on the doubles department, one from six for him, four from five for Housen, and that brilliant checkout, one, four, six, which changed the whole tide of the game. Jenkins was left poised to make it 2-2. Two, two. Housen took the big finish out to make it 3-1, and he is the victor against Rocky. When we return, it's going to be a darting battle between Messrs. Nicholson and Newton, rivalries we knew after this short break.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth where Richie Housen has just made it three wins from three in Group B. Another convincing 4-1 victory for him in that last match. His finishing has been a real strength tonight, hasn't it? He's not had a checkup percentage below 40% so far this evening. That by far his best, though, missing just one of his five attempts at the outer ring. Another ton-plus finish in that match as well. A superb 1-4 six on double 13 to go with his one two one and one six one from earlier this evening and he really does seem like the standout performer so far in group b doesn't he next up then we have nicholson against newton nicholson getting his first win of the super series in his last match a little bit of double trouble in closing out that match but he finally pinned double three to get over the line and i think of these two players it'll be nicholson who is the happy with his performance levels in Group B so far. So then, to get into this one, let's hand back over to our commentary team. Yeah, thank you very much, Abby. These two have had some darting battles, haven't they, over the years? Paul Nicholson and Wes Newton, and they renew their Tuxton rivalry here at the Super Series. They have had some big battles over the years. They played at some of the biggest tournaments there is in darts, the Grand Slam, the Grand Prix, the match play. But they are serving up some midnight entertainment here at the Super Series. Late night entertainment here at the Super Series. The 43-year-old Nico from Blythe. The assets up against Wes Newton, age 45 from Fleetwood. Both kind of burst onto the scene at the same time. Wes was kind of around a little bit before first Paul. But gets Paul the throw first. Perhaps both peaked at around the same time in their career. Yeah, it probably was the same time they burst onto the scene, just on different sides of the world. Nicholson arrived in the UK, having dominated the Australian scene for a while, having taken up residency 41. down under. Uh, but you mentioned some of those meetings and you know the big bulk of them in the early part of last decade when they were both at the peak of their powers. 85. I do remember vividly that, that 2014 world match play match that went into overtime, Newton winning by the two-leg rule. He had to win by two clear legs. He won it 15-13, took out a massive 160 checkout in overtime in that game. It was a really gripping contest. Testosterone 59. fueled Tungsten Tussle and Paul Nicholson. Well, it hit him in the pocket a little bit, that match as well. The DRA were knocking on his door. And I just wonder if Nicholson won that game, whether that would have changed a few things in his career. Would well, have been in the quarterfinals of the match play. Had a rough couple of years, but that could have been the spark. And we see it often, don't we? Yet one run can catapult a player back up. Well, like another 59. one was a year before, a final of a European Tour, where Nicholson mismatched arts to beat Wes Newton. Newton taking that Euro Tour title. And I know that's, that's one that Paul Nicholson really looks back at as one that got away. Newton winning the bulk of their meetings 57. and also the bulk of their really significant meetings. The other one that springs to mind was when he was in the quarterfinals of the World Grand Prix back in 2012, the tournament which was won by Michael Van Gerwen in his first PDC major. 45, Paul, you require 167. Won by the odd set in five on that occasion. So some really interesting matches in their darting story. This would be a really interesting start to this match. He can't resist it. 124. Well, let's see if he should have resisted. He would have coached his client not to go for that, I can promise you. I can already hear his voice sat in your seat you saying, go for the 18. But it won't matter. Newton, not on a finish, so the wasting of a dart, not a problem at all for Paul Nicholson, who's now looking to... Earn himself back-to-back -back victories, having got the better of Tony O'Shea in the previous yeah, match. Yeah, that's short than and the you'd first have to line. say on what Ball we've witnessed so far from Wes that he's there for the taking tonight. And this was not what we expected. We saw Second him in group A. He's almost the frustrator Game. of the group. Caused everyone problems. Just hasn't quite equated to tonight so far for the Warrior. Two-time major finalist at the UK fun. Open and the... European Championship, which, ironically, that European Championship in 2012 was where Nicholson made his commentary debut. 
Yeah, did a lot of things right in 2012, didn't he, Wes Newton? Simon Whitlock winning that tournament. His maiden PDC major has doubled his tally, of course, 10 years later by winning the World Cup. Another 49. tournament that in 2012 got away from Paul Nicholson as part of the Australian team. Every single player on the stage had matched arts in that titanic tussle between Whitlock and Nicholson and Taylor and Lewis. 81. Surely there will not be a better final in that competition than that. You'll be hard-pressed to find one. It's stunning. It's one of the reasons that match why everybody advocates for more doubles matches at the World Cup because the drama was just incredible. It's one of those few moments in sport that you what, what you're watching in front of you just makes you run up and down a room. 100. Because you can't quite believe what's happening. Even though it's unfolding and you're seeing it in front of your eyes, there's a disbelief about it. 87. Well, Newton made sure he left himself a finish there. 25 would have left him 170. But Nicholson's still very much in control, even though he's throwing second in this leg. One treble would keep him in control, but that might just surrender it. 85. Where's your requirement? Great recovery with the last dart. We saw a 146 swing the tide in our last match. Can Newton do it with a 145? Tops he wants. One on the five. And he wasn't too Four far away either. 95. Whenever you ask Nicholson about a bogeyman, he always replies, Where's Newton? You know. It's two double nineteens here. There's one of them. 57. West you require 40. And it stops at one. So Newton back on tops. Will Newton be a nuisance for Nico again? He will be if he hits double 10. 20. But he fails to find Four it. Or you require 38. Does he go straight for it again or does he decide to split? He looks as if he's going straight for it. Three for double eight. For a 2 0 lead. 22. West you require 20. Yeah, missing opportunities, Paul Nicholson. Wes Newton needing double five and can't finish now. No score. You may Four know you that Paul Nicholson 16. did not watch a single one of those darts from Wes Newton. He's unsure at what point he missed, for all he knows. He threw three darts outside the double ten. Well, is there a double that Nicholson hasn't gone for in this leg? Eight. There isn't one he's hit yet. West should require 20. That's one for nine on the outer ring. Double ten. Yeah, that's game short in a second leg. And Newton West gets Newton. the leg in the end. You feel like that's a little bit of a get out of jail free card there in the end. Third I think is either player who ever won that leg game would have on. felt that way. And so Newton levels us up at one apiece. This is the last outing of the evening for Paul Nicholson. 60. And having lost his first couple of matches, he would be very, very happy heading home with two wins under his belt. Where's Newton? Has Richie Housen still to play? He could still end the night with two wins following two defeats. Earlier in the evening. Sometimes it's not how many you win, but when you win them. Most players would be much happier with two wins if they lost the first two matches than if they won the first two. We've spoken before, haven't we, about the last game complex. That the last result is the one you're going to stew over. You could win your first 16. four games, 4-0. Four average 101 in each and every single one of them. But if you lose the last one 4-3... You're not thinking about the subsequent four nils. You're thinking about your last result. And of course, remember, 57. the fixtures flip tomorrow. So the opponent in your last game is your opponent in the first game. You also have that psyche to deal with. 54. I would disagree. Because if you've played that well for four games, really you should be able to allow yourself one off. But 
professional darts players can be some of the most negative sports people you'll ever 79. witness. Seventy nine. Chris Mason, an example today in his interview with Abby, having won all five matches, but not happy with how he'd played. And they rarely are because when they practice, they do it so well. He spoke of fifty one eighties hitting 39. the practice room today, didn't he, Chris Mason? Not taking it to the stage. They want to win, but they all want to produce their practice game on the stage time after time, and it rarely happens. And sometimes just picking up the points is all that's needed. 41. If we presented them with a glass that has water in, that has half of the content inside it, they would say that the glass is half empty One more than they'd say 40. the glass is half full. Well, Newton will be hoping that it'll be halfway there in this particular match by taking out the 108 and it would be for a break of throw but it's going to be under severe pressure moves of course for the 13. what should require 108. can be done now 84 for you require 50. one of the reasons a lot of players might employ the the treble 18 route on the 108 because if you miss either side you've still got a chance Double 16. 18. Where should he require well, has 24? Has Wes Newton been living in Paul Nicholson's head rent free all this time? Because Newton is not yeah, firing at all here, a bird line. but he's winning. Wes Newton. And it's a win that's been gifted to him, if he does indeed get it, by Paul Nicholson, who cannot look at Wes Newton. Look Four at that. Is West back first. to back. Game on. Angry asset here at the Super Series. You said, you said that he needed to find some fired up spirit. Maybe that is what he's finding. 16. There was a bit of a scowl appeared on the face of Paul Nicholson. Struggling to find any kind of level. And Wes Newton has been way off it tonight. Uh, he would be the first to admit that himself. Not up there with the standard that he produced for most of the week in Group A. Here, averaging only a little over 70. 59. But the 10 missed starts at double from Paul Nicholson have presented him with opportunities which eventually he's taken. Because Newton himself has missed seven. 135. And to be honest, two treble visits here have been a bit of a rarity. That's Newton's first of the match. 82. And it's given him the advantage with throw to open up a 3-1 lead. 83. One hundred. Where should require one hundred and forty? One hundred and twenty. One hundred, where she required twenty. So Newton was double ten then no for score. a three one lead, but he's busted. Or you require one hundred. He's busted by going into the double fifteen, and so Nicholson returns to a ton to make it two two. And still be done, trouble fifteen for tops. Sixty. And that would have felt Russia like a real steal. And so 20. Newton returns for the pesky double 10. That's awkward. Has to move across. Yeah, that's game short. And the no problem West for Wes Newton. Newton, who leads Nicholson by three legs to one. And maybe the Fifth flag starting the demons first. Game on. for Nicholson against Newton may come back into play here. Needs to win the lot. 
Yeah, I mentioned he's a man who does think about these kind of things, Paul Nicholson. Whether or not he's had any bearing on his performance in this game, we'd be guessing. But it is 10-4 in the head-to-head. -head to Wes Newton. 22. Including... all of their meetings on stage. 45. And that run may continue. And it would see Newton get off the mark for the evening and join Paul Nicholson on a couple of points. Join 60. Tony O'Shea on a couple of points. And your prediction may come to pass, Henry, that we get a couple of players racing away and the, the final three are left to battle it out for position three. which would make this match 44. tomorrow, it will be the third match of the depth of, of the night, very significant. Could possibly decide whether you've got a chance of qualifying or not. That could be the ramifications. Newton will, of course, already have played. Well, two more matches between now and then, the end of tonight and the first of tomorrow. I mean, Nicholson's got a long break One after this game. 21. A lot of thinking time, and because he's the first to finish tonight, he'll be the last to start tomorrow. He's effectively seen a round and a half of matches come and go by the time he next steps foot on the hockey in this competition. Yeah, lots out of his control. And the one thing that darts players will tell you is they'd rather be on the stage one of their own 20 doing their one. thing than sat watching and hoping someone else does it for them. Dildo Nicholson not out of this match. Paul, you require 92. Well, you'd think he'll have six at 92. That's not discouraging Newton taking out the 150. 72 remaining. Decided to stay for the trouble 20 to leave himself a dart at double six. No score. Oh, but he's going to have to start West again. West require 150. Well, that was a, a huge miss. The margin of some of the darts that double, both the double 16 and double 6 attempt have been dragged so low. Ball, you require Real tension 92. in the arm of Paul Nicholson. And what does he do now on 92? May even start on the bullseye. He's just checking what Wes Newton's got here. He's got to put that last visit to the back of his mind. Does he go aggressive? Or is it the bullseye? Well, he's found a 19. So it has to go treble. Went for treble 11. And a big bust. 45. Might West see Paul Nicholson 65. come a cropper here. He's going to get one dart at tops for the match. 45. But it comes and goes. And Nicholson will return for 47. And from this comfortable position in the leg, he may only get... Well, he should get two darts at double. It may be the only darts he gets. And the double he wants... Is 16. One left. 15. Well, they were better West thrown darts. Wasn't 20. pulled low like his previous attempts, but this could draw the curtain on the contest. Double five. No score. Wayward from West. Or you require 32. 14 darts missed by Nicholson at the outer ring. It's 12 darts missed by Newton. Yeah, that's game short in the fifth flag. Nicholson gets Paul there Nicholson. in the end, and the game goes on. But crucially here, Wes Newton has the dart to seal a 4-2 victory. Well, you would say that would be crucial in, in most contests, but it hasn't really mattered. He might as well have started on the doubles in this game. 78. To get the scoring segment, it's just about who can hit a double first. I wouldn't recommend doubling for this match, Murph. I'll be honest with you. I'm just saying, eliminate the scoring segment completely. Like the old uh, Yorkshire board. 76. Sixty-four. Well, we have to say it as it is, and there's no doubt this has been the poorest quality game of the evening and the big reason for that is all those missed starts 
that they have to ring in the match. And there you see. 28 darts missed between them. 85. Let's get rid of that. We don't want to see that anymore. Both of these players would like to see. <laughs> 58. Our graphics team having a laugh. 60. Can Wes Newton get rid of this 214 in the next two to three visits? Will he get more than two? 60. He's 154, so you may suggest it could be advantage Nicholson if he can, well, I was going to say get a couple of travels, but not in that particular bed. 35. West, you require 154. Another. Would have left tops, and now Paul Nicholson's going to have to get the cue out, put some chalk on the end, and make the clearance. 130. Paul, you require 147. Is Nico Tungsten Loopy? Now he's requiring snookers. He's requiring a miss from Newton. 57. West, you require 24. Well, it's a familiar story for Paul Nicholson when he runs into this particular opponent. Good shot. That he comes out on the West wrong Newton. end, and it's happened again. A wry smile from Paul Nicholson, who it seems ran out of gas towards the end of the evening. Wes Newton didn't perform an awful lot better, but does pick up his first two points of the night and has a chance to double his tally. When he takes on Richie Housen in the last match of the evening, oh, that will be a, a tough task, bearing in mind that Housen has won all of his games so far. But Newton over the line in that one, 4-2. That is the only metric that matters in that match for Wes. He picks up his first point. Tony O'Shea still on two points, looking to go on to four. But Andy Jenkins looking to join Housen at the top of the table if he can beat O'Shea after the break.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Wes Newton has just picked up his first two points of the evening with a 4-2 victory over Paul Nicholson. Neither player will want to see the finishing stats in that one. It was a really poor quality encounter. And interestingly, Wes actually stayed on the stage for a good two minutes after that one, just staring at the scoreboard and shaking his head. He then had three more darts at the board before exiting the stage and still managed to get a bounce out. We can have a little look at the table then with two more games remaining this evening. It's Richie Housen, who's been the standout performer this evening on six points at the moment. And the two players up next, Jenkins and O'Shea, are just behind him in second and third place. Tony O'Shea, of course, could move on to uh, four points with Andy Jenkins if he is to be victorious in this one. So Jenks then, he's won two of his three matches so far. He took out an 86 finish to beat Wes Newton in his match there. It was a 4-1 victory for him. He was the better player with 40% checkout success in that match. It was a much better finishing display from him in that one than in his last match. So then our penultimate match of the evening, let's hand back over to our commentary team. Thanks, Abby. Yes, it seems Wes Newton has been removed from the stage so that this pair can enjoy a tungsten tear-up and a match that is a Super Series four-pointer, isn't it? Tony O'Shea can go level, as Abby just illustrated. Or Andy Jenkins can pull four points clear of his opponent in this one. Rocky, former World Championship semi-finalist, having been beaten by Richie Housen in his last outing, looking for a recovery. And Tony O'Shea looking for something similar after being beaten by Paul Nicholson. It will be the only win for Nico on an, his opening appearance at the Super Series. First leg, it's ended it through first. But a win Game that on. probably keeps him in contention for at least a third place finish, and that's all you need to get through to finals night on Saturday. This pair will be Harbury 43. bigger ambitions than that. Well, this is the third meeting between this pair in all competitions. Not surprised when you consider both players have played in separate codes over the years. Tony O'Shea has won both of their previous battles. He won a Challenge Tour match in Wigan back in 2018, 5-4. And then won in a quarter-final in the 2002 British Open. That game was so far, uh, so long ago and so far back that we haven't even got a record of the scoreline. It just has Tony O'Shea win, Andy Jenkins Let's lose. See. So if we want to, Murph, we could make up any scoreline we want in that particular match. 107. 59. 106. Must win by two clear legs. <laughs> Imagine if you did play first of 107, must win by two clear. 14. They'd be on the floor. Well, there was a time at the World Match Play where the rule was just one, must win by two clear, so it's conceivable that a game could have been like Isna Mayhut at Wimbledon. 15. Mm. And the Winter Gardens might have become... The autumn, summer, and spring gardens as well. Yeah, I remember that. Mahu against Isner at Wimbledon. 77. I remember it finished on one day. I went to school the next day. I came back from school, and that game was still going on. 96. Yeah, and what makes your story worse is that it was only three weeks ago. <laughs> Sixteen. And I just wonder as well, because we are finishing a little 16. bit later than we usually do in the in the evening session. For the players playing in these last two matches, how much of this is going to be about stamina and what they have left in the tank? Never mind the never mind the last two matches. I think we saw that in the previous match. Fourteen. And you require one hundred and twenty eight. The players prepare for certain times that 42. they're aware of the schedule. They know when they're expecting to so go on. So, for example, Paul Nicholson, who was expecting to play his last match probably 45 minutes earlier than he did end up playing it. Maybe in the end, just lost that bit of 59. And you energy. 86. 
Tony O'Shea may lose a leg, having missed the bullseye. Fifty-four. Tony, you require twenty-five. And so twenty-five for O'Shea for a break of throw. This should be for a twenty-three dart break. Seventeen. And you require. But this 32. opening leg goes on. Been a real war of attrition so Air far. But Jenkins claims the and opener Jenkins. in twenty-six. Second lag, it's Tony to throw first. Game on. Yeah, I think you made a good point, actually, Henry. A few of the players may well be over practiced. 59. I'll tell you what, Murph, because it's half one in the morning, let's have some more tungsten fun. We were posing the question of pundit top fives. Let's yeah. get a step closer well, to finding it out. I stuck to pundits that I've actually been able to to watch myself and listen to. One so I haven't gone 14. international. I've stuck in UK. Shall we just finish it now? Why not? So I went for the, the question that Henry posed was the 16. top pundits throughout commentators based on what they've achieved in their darting careers. And I've already mentioned John Part and Eric Bristow. I'm going to add to that Alan Warren a little. Martin Adams, who of course is a, a regular here 14. at the Super Series. And the last one, Mark Webster, I'm going to put in there as well. So they're my five. What say you? So I've agreed with you on Part, Adams, Warren a Little, and Bristow. I am taking out Mark Webster and replacing him with Raymond Van Barneveld, who works on coverage in Via Play over in the Netherlands. Fair enough. 83. Tony, you require 27. 27 and game for Tony O'Shea if he finds the double eight. 11. Which he can't, but he will return to level the match. Five darts missed at double, so it's been a case of Tony no Shea so far in this match. 59. Tony, you require 16. Well, Andy has an opportunity if it's more misses yeah, for Tony, but he puts it right point. and Tony levels O'Shea. the score at one apiece. I'm just to put you in the picture Third of where we are in this group as it approaches its halfway Game stage. On. Richie House are now in front, having won all three of his matches. Six points from three games. Andy Jenkins, hot on his heels, looking to join him. One on the own, 40. Having won two of his three, sits on four points. The other three players all have two points with one win. Paul Nicholson has played four. This is Tony O'Shea's fourth. 100. And Newton takes on House in this evening's curtain closer. Although it's conceivable by the time we 17. close the curtains, he might have to open back up again. Yeah, and you can go to bed watching darts and wake up watching darts. 9.30am, we'll be back in action for the conclusion of Group C, featuring one of our other Super Series 100. commentators on the hockey, Chris Mason, who won all five of his games on Thursday, looking to get over the line and join his 97. Bristolian buddy Mark Dudbridge at finals night on Saturday. And if you don't just want to watch on telly, you want to be up close watching the action here in our intimate setting of the live lounge. 16. Tickets are available for the grand old price of zero. That's right, free tickets at dartshop.tv and a drink on the house on arrival as well. Can't say fairer than that. 25. That's a miscount by Andy Jenkins. A single eight team would have left the big fish. Although, 59. he's going to get away with it. Sixteen. Fifty-four. And you require 109. Interesting decision there from Tony O'Shea to try and uh, utilise the, the, the treble 14 Andy segment. Jenkins. Would have left himself on a ton had he found it. But Andy Jenkins takes out a ton topper and edges ahead in the game at 2-1.
Neg 1 and 18, 109 being the high out in this match now. Jenkins leads 2 1. One more game after this one. 16. And it will see Wes Newton and Richie Howson go to battle. 16. Perhaps appropriate that the hour will close off the show this evening. And it could be a, a perfect night for Richie House, and who I thought was 96. more than competitive, impressive enough when he appeared at our old venue in Southampton, his first outing at the Super Series. 100. It won't be a big surprise to those who have been watching him over the course of this season to see him sitting on the perch at the top of the tree in this group. 55. And we've mentioned it all week, but there is a recency bias which helps us with the form guides in the fact that those who played more 45. recently are the ones you'd favour to go on and do well. Hansen's very much in that bracket. O'Shea did make the semi-finals of that Seniors World Masters event, which he also got to the last four stage of. They both went 41. out to the subsequent finalists, Phil Taylor and David Cameron. 99. I just wonder whether there's a couple of tired minds here, Murph, because there's just been one or two moments where the numeracy has just lapsed a little bit. 89. Yeah, perhaps. I think sometimes in Andy Jenkins' case in particular, he's just... 44. Tony Declan, 116. There have been some slips. Tony O'Shea... We mentioned all week. Doesn't really like switching. 60. And you require 153. Thought better of going elsewhere to leave himself on a ton. 60. Tony, you require 100. So can Tony get the ton? Tops for Tony. Yeah, there we go, Tony. Tony well, O'Shea. after a struggle on the outer wing in the first couple of legs, we've had back-to-back -back ton plus outs. A 109 from Jenkins, and now that tops from Tony O'Shea to cooing the ton. And we are level at two apiece. 95. And you yeah. get the sense this is a game that's going to go the distance. Yeah, Tony O'Shea's ton plus or ton checkout in that leg was his only three-figure visit in the leg. 16. Save your best till last. Absolutely. He did it in two darts as well. 140. Well, if you ask other players, they'll say, you know, it's in their own hands. They don't care what their opponents do, but I'm pretty sure that Wes Newton and particularly Paul Nicholson wouldn't mind this being a group where the top two run away and it's a battle between One three for the final place. All of a sudden, if Nicholson, if he has left and gone to catch 40 winks, wakes up tomorrow five. morning and sees and that he's one of three players on two points, tonight doesn't look as bad as he might have felt. It's recoverable. One hundred and thirty-seven. He leaves himself on double four after twelve. O'Shea can only apply as much pressure as he possibly can. That trouble will help. One hundred. Only one five one. Eight. So Jenkins returns for three two. Well, I think he thought he'd hit the the double seventeen there. Four. Tony, you require 151. I wonder whether Jenkins' thought process of the last start would have been different if O'Shea wasn't on 151. Because now he's left on double two. Four. And O'Shea is on double 16. No score. And he's gone on the other side. And suddenly O'Shea has an opportunity to pinch his pocket. Well, he thought he hit double 17 in the 32. previous visit. He did hit it in the next visit. Shake of the head from Andy Jenkins. 
Yeah, that's game Sean in the fifth flag. Tony O'Shea. A scratch of the head now from Andy Jenkins. Bemused at how he's found himself behind in this game. But Tony O'Shea suddenly has the darts Six to win the match. Tony to throw first. Game on. O'Shea has a dart. Cecily. 4-2 Victor put him on four points alongside Andy Jenkins. And if Wes Newton can get victory against Richie House, and this will not make 65. for pleasant reading for Paul Nicholson overnight. Ninety-seven. Yeah, still that one win does mean that he's still in with a chance, of course, but it looks even more important, doesn't it? The fact he got the better of O'Shea earlier this evening. Ninety-four. It also means there's pressure on Andy Jenkins tomorrow. He spoke about self-inflicted pressure by invi inviting all his mates to a, a Portsmouth party on Saturday night. One on the M40. I believe they are both coming. Yeah, I'm in the commentary box. We like a party in Pomping Mare. 81. I can confirm, actually, Henry wasn't even working last week and he turned up. 100. Must have been the free drink. 100. Tried to get rid of me. I heard they didn't let you in. 100. And you require 164. Turns out I'm actually the phantom mice of a couple of weeks ago. 82. Tony, you require 160. Like a bad odor you can't get rid of. Anyway, O'Shea, we're hoping to get rid of this 161 for the match. Jenkins is going to return for 82 to take us all the way. 100. And you require 82. Bullseye for starters. No, he's gone for treble 14. Which means it's bullseye at the end of the visit. Uh, game short well, Andy, the Jenkins Andy Jenkins. Maybe went the wrong route, but he found the right destination. Played all the right notes, but in the wrong places. But it doesn't Seven matter. Final leg. It's Andy to throw first. The tungsten Game tune. On. Has been played. We go to a 60. final leg once again. It's actually the first time we've gone the distance since game two. And the first two games of our night did go 4-3. But O'Shea is making hay. One hey, baby. Fifty-five. Now, following what we've seen, can Tony go back to back? Can Tony go back to back? No, no, he can't. One on the forty. But five out of six ain't bad when throwing second in a last leg decider. Seventy. Well, Tony will want victory, and he will need victory here to progress through. One eight, one after six. And he's found the best leg of the match in the last leg One of the match. 40. Spellbinding from O'Shea. He's found some fumes. Yeah, what a time to turn One it on. And 36. Andy Jenkins, powerless to salt. Wrong bed. 27 remain. Double eight for the match. Game. What a leg Shots. of darts that and is from Tony O'Shea. Tony O'Shea. What a way to win. And now, suddenly, Tony O'Shea has leapfrogged Andy Jenkins into second place on leg difference. Four points for the pair of them after four legs went the way of O'Shea with a brilliant dozen darter to get over the line. There wasn't much to write home about before it. Two ton topping checkouts, one for each of them, but O'Shea winning in a sudden death shootout. One match left to play. Would it be a perfect night for the Owl Richie Housen? Or can Wes Newton join the chasing pack on four points? We'll find out after this.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Tony O'Shea has just recorded his second victory of the evening. It is now though time for our final match of the session. It's Wes Newton against Richie Housen. Housen's finishing has been exemplary, hasn't it, all evening. Three ton plus checkouts in this session. We had the 1-2-1 and the 1-6-1 of course in his opening match and then a 1-4-6 to go along with it. There we can see it in his victory over and Jenkins. He has, of course, made it three wins out of three so far. Can he make it the perfect evening in Group B and get that fourth victory? Let's find out in the company of our commentary team for the final match of the evening. Thank you very much, Abby. And this is the final game of 25 on Tungsten Thursday, which has moved into the early hours of Friday morning. It's Wes Newton up against Richie Housen to end our marathon day of tungsten drama and tungsten tension and it's only a few more hours till we get it all going again in group c yeah richie Housen ending the night's action the owl sitting pretty at the top of the group b table and will remain there whatever happens in this match wes newton can actually tie for second place after a dreadful start to the evening but a win here would see him move level with points to Tony O'Shea and Andy Jenkins and put Paul Nicholson bottom. First lag is Wester's throw on first. Two. We've just one win. On. That came against O'Shea. Newton lost out to O'Shea 4-0 in his opener. Andy Jenkins 4-1 in his second match, but got the better of Nicholson as he always seems to do. Well, let's see if it will be a clean sweep for Housen. Well, this session has been a little bit like Wes Newton's walk-on song. It's been a crazy, crazy night. Here at the Nine Super two, Series. Five. Started to feel like a lazy, lazy night in some of the last matches. One on the end, have seen 21. Players, I think, looking a little bit tired. But one last push required here. Come on, Murph, you can do it. One more, gang. One on the end, 35. It's interesting to hear Chris Mason because he's done what we're doing 45. tonight many times, sitting in this chair twice on Thursday, short sleep, and then back on Friday morning. But he spoke about being on fumes. It's completely different for the players than it is for 59. us sat in our uh, nice, comfortable chairs in the commentary room. And you won't hear me complaining. An absolute dream of a job to be able to talk you through some top tungsten tossing. Whether it's early morning or late night. Well, I tell you what, they're going to give us a treat to finish, aren't they? Good first leg. Newton down to 58 after 12. Housen as well with 16. an economic start. Should require 58. Would be mad, wouldn't it? Would be mad to see an absolute yeah, blockbuster of a performance from Wes Newton. Maybe it's those extra practice darts he had on the stage at the end of the previous match. A 14 data. Second leg is Richard the Warrior. Field first. Game on. To take the first leg against the league leader. One hundred. If you are the players, Chris, what would you be doing tomorrow? Just because it's been a slightly later finish, 16. do you just deviate your prep a little bit? Maybe have a little bit longer in bed tomorrow just have a bit more of a line and then maybe just take the day a bit more steady before going into game mode a bit later on in the evening i think it's whatever suits you richie Housen will want to repeat whatever he did tonight wes newton will probably evaluate after this match and see where he went wrong and where he went right this evening interestingly chris mason said he he realized he'd lost his first game every single one day this M week 40. so got here earlier this morning and practiced and then won his first game today the little things like that, trying to change something, is an old saying, isn't there? Is nothing changes, nothing changes. And trying to change something to impact 95. the outcome. We might catch him on the way out. One on the end, 40. I do get the sense Chris Mason would like to win a couple of matches and then just give buys to his opponent for the rest of the day tomorrow. 
But do remember, we are back on air at 9.30 a.m. One on the end, 24. Live on Sporty Stuff West TV and the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. Some more Arrows action. Just checking there, Wes, that that was indeed 99. in the treble 20. Richie, you require 82. So 82 here for Housen. Decides to go bullseye first. Because it gives him the opportunity 62. up at top. The Which guarantee of a dart. 62. So Newton returns for 62 for a 2 0 lead. Forty-six. Richie, you require Just a little 20. wince from Wes. He knows that was an opportunity. Yeah, that's and been short of the second leg. Richie Hosen. One that got away from Wes Newton. But we did wonder if we would see the Third end is West of the night. First game on. Carry on in the vein of the last couple of games where players just seem to have flagged a little bit. One on the end, 40. But certainly Wes Newton is peaking here. He'd love to start this night all over again. 95. Well, if this was the first match, Henry, you might as well stay here. Means more time in your company. I wouldn't say no to it. 49. The feeling's mutual. I'm happy to spend more time in my own company as well. <laughs> 100. Still razor sharp and it's nearly two in the morning. You're all about razor sharp. That's what Chris Mason's been in Group C. He's been the hegemonic figure in Group 100. C, having won all of his opening five fixtures yesterday. I'd be hoping it's not Freaky Friday at the Super Series. Yeah, doesn't want to see 100. the Scott Walters method happen to him. Five wins on Thursday, five defeats on Friday, and a fifth-place finish in the group, remarkably. 97. Earlier on in the series. Now, Newton will come back looking at 115 to keep himself... In control of the tie, and he may well need to take it out One the because 74. that is a beautiful West visit from Richie Housen. A done dash to leave him on 32 after 12, and Newton has to take out the 115. Had to go down for trouble 19 for the wet because it double doesn't go. Richie so Housen, a 13 dart leg for the break of throw, was double 16. Yeah, that's gets double 16. Richie Housen. And he leaves Newton by two legs to one. This is a quality encounter to end Ford the day's action the here first. at the Super Game Series. Yeah, the finishing from Housen has been a key feature of his game tonight. That's what's keeping the averages higher for him. We've seen other players miss bucket loads of darts, but it hasn't happened that way for Housen. One on the end, 35. But now both players averaging in three figures. 81. They were. One on the end, 40. One on the end, 40. They are. Well, save the best till last. I have to say, maybe I'm guilty of underestimating because One I wasn't expecting 40. this. Supreme standard. Should we let them carry on all night, Murph? Well, the thing is, Wes One Newton has peaked here, but Richie Housen has still managed to lift his 86. level. Put 106 average here, eyeing up an 11 dart leg. Tots for 3-1. 66. Just West underneath. Well, we've already seen a 146. That was from Housen against Andy Jenkins. 
This time it was for 2 2. It put House of 3 1 in front against Rocky. 20. And so double 10 to put in within one. A victory in our final game of the day. Yeah, that's game shot in the fourth. And as you said, Newton Richie is Hudson. peaking, but Housen has found himself a dance partner here and averaging a shade under 103. And he's putting in the performance. It could first. potentially end game up on. being the performance of the week if he can get this done in about 13 or 14. 16. What's Wes Newton thinking here? Because he, in his last match, a victory averaged 30 points less than he's averaging in this one. And he's getting beaten 3-1. 59. I don't even think you can analyse things like that. It's just it's just darting madness. Funny old game, isn't it? 100. And that's one of the points we were making earlier. It's not about the averages. It's about the points. It's about the Ws. It's those mean matches. One those are three mean darts from Richie Housen. And it puts him on the periphery of victory. In our final game of the evening. 45. Absolutely. Demonic display from Housen. There you see the standard looking sublime. And it could well be the best performance of the week. That is 103.66 produced by Chris Mason earlier on in the week. He's getting better. One of them, 40. He's Richie just riding the wave, isn't 82. he? Richie Housen started well this evening and has improved. And even as Wes Newton has taken the game to him, he's lifted his level to extraordinary heights. And now he wants top. 62. Wes should require 156. A last chance for Wes Newton. He's into the last chance saloon at 5 to 2. He wants 156. To save the match. And so Housen returns for double 10. It's been a friend. And it could 44. finish off. Richie, you require 20. Our Thursday flurry of tungsten treats. Game. And Short. Richie Housen and the match. is the man Richie to Housen. beat in Group B. It's a perfect night for the Owl. Four wins from four for the man from Essex. He gets the better of Wes Newton 4-1. In the game of the night, they saved it until last. An average of 105.36, two maximums to his name, four from seven on the doubles. Wes Newton, 95 and a half average, and one from three on the outer ring. So victory for Richie Housen by four legs to one here against Wes Newton. Let's get some final thoughts and reflections up on the balcony with Abigail Davies. Yeah, the highest average of the week there from Housen, who leads the way in Group B at the halfway stage. We'll move on to Group C, of course, in the morning. But just a final reminder of how things have ended here in Group B at the halfway stage. It is Housen who is out on eight points. A perfect day for him in Group B. And that will conclude from 10 p.m. tomorrow evening. But our attention first turns to Group C, and that concludes from 9.30 tomorrow morning. A reminder, it's Chris Mason who leads the way in that one, having won five of his five matches this afternoon. So then we'll return at 9.30 tomorrow morning on Sporty Stuff TV. We look forward to seeing you then. The Moda Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill.